<laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to tonight's episode of Critical Role, where a bunch of us nerdy ass voice actors sit around and play Dungeons and Dragons. Dragons! <laughs> <laughs> Before we get into our episode tonight, though, we do have a few announcements to get through, beginning uh, with our first sponsor of the night, Quip. Sam, what's up tonight? Uh, you guys all know that Quip has these amazing smart toothbrushes, smart electric toothbrushes that make your mouth feel great when you use them. But what you don't know is that when we took on Quip as our sponsor, one of the conditions was that I, Sam Regal, never put their toothbrush in my mouth on camera. This is true. Uh, that was their that's one big. That's a really cool one. I know. I like that. I know. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. That. Yeah. Uh, that was their one big no no. They said, do not do that. And listen, I get it. No one wants to see me shove uh, something into my mouth covered in toothbrush, uh, no matter how uh, to pay toothpaste, no matter how awesome the toothbrush oh, is. How about a toothbrush? It would look gross. However, they it's never said cool. anything about me shoving other things into my mouth or brushing my teeth with other things that resemble toothbrushes. There we go. Ah. So, tonight, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to brush my teeth, not with Quip toothbrushes, but with other things, while Marisha yeah. reads the copy. Is it like an every two or three oh, year quarter? I've got to read the copy. I've got to brush my teeth. Why the faster you, you read it, the faster this ends. We're, uh, we're a sponsor's nightmare. Um, okay, while well, Sam is brushing his no! teeth oh, with I various objects, <laughs> Such as licorice. Uh, um, uh, 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 well, that's a pickle. Uh huh. Um, a lollipop. Uh -huh. That's great. Ew. Read faster. Read faster. Uh, and a cigar. Oh, Don't oh, no. Oh, no, 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 Smart motor <laughs> that should help yeah. clean out all of there the. Um, get it in there. Get it in there. All How the, am I supposed to explain this to your kids? All the party horns. Oh, no. Um, uh, and oh. the and the and the pipe cleaners. I might throw up, guys. <laughs> oh my god! Please don't barf on camera. <laughs> the cigar <laughs> are doing um, <laughs> po Pocky. Get in your nose. Ah. Is there Pocky? Uh -huh. There's Pocky. Yeah, there's Pocky. <laughs> and uh, Slim Jims. No. Oh, wow. no. oh wait, there's Slim Jims. Mm. Don't do it with the metal. Don't say you the metal. Don't. Well, quip. well, Sam is currently uh, 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 jamming that in his mouth. Mm. With a free Quip app, mm. you can track your brushing, get <laughs> tips, and daily and daily coaching. Uh huh. Um, I lost my spot because I'm so distracted. <laughs> no. Um, Oh. And you can earn rewards like Target gift cards for good habits, like brushing two minutes twice a day, which will be perfect when Sam is finishing. Uh, sorry, Don't finish. Don't do the metal. You're gonna hurt yourself. Like a hellish uh, cushion. You mouthing those the, the bananas and the, the chopsticks. There's metal in the pipe cleaners too. Don't do the pipe no. cleaners. Not do the pipe cleaners. No. Oh, stop it. No. Stop it, Sam. Put it down. <laughs> You see, like Sam. Don't raise his mouth. Marisha, read fast. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's so distracting. Like Sam, you can start getting rewards at quip.com slash critical25. <laughs> 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 Twelve inches in the back. <laughs> I mean, there was a lot of shit there. I'm, uh, that's, I'm pretty that's sure scary. that was a pretty that's impressive, though. <laughs> Sam, your I'm pretty sure you just voided all your health insurance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Blue Cross is gonna oh, send you a letter. God. I am that's gonna a take one of these parties, Way too though. long. Uh, I know. I should have different I'm kind of Sam, we really enjoyed a critical role. Also, your policy has been canceled. I didn't canceled. want to touch any of that. <laughs> no. This episode is also sponsored by our <laughs> the official D and D tool set, D and D Beyond. <laughs> <laughs> if you have somehow not been aware of made of D&D &D Beyond, at this point it is the home of all things D&D &D via a slick digital experience and houses all of their publications, including our very own Explorer's Guide to Wild Mount and Call of the Nether Deep. 
And with D&D growing, so should your own collection of works. So right now you can enjoy 15% off D&D books at D&D Beyond until September 5th. Just head over to dndbeyond.link slash crsale. Thanks to D&D Beyond for continuing to support the show, and I'm going to brush my teeth with this D&D book. Because oh. <laughs> I know I'm better so than to do that. Right now. Marisha. I don't feel good. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, a uh, reminder that you can join us for the sixth episode of Foresighted Dive yep. next Tuesday, September 6th at 7 p.m. Pacific on Twitch and YouTube. Good. Traumatized. Laura. Good. Traumatized. Hey, Laura, guys. please. <laughs> Bring it back. Bring it back. It's Fern Week here. <laughs> <laughs> you better believe it. <laughs> So seriously, oh, I can smell the pickles and it's grossing me out. Okay, we've got, check it out, a giant, thank you, Mr. Plushie. Broly, a little chunky boy. Also, if this guy's just too big for you, you need something a little smaller. Check out this one. Take it with you wherever you go. Oh my god, I love it. I know, even huge. the boxes are always oh, like so cute and cute. And then also, <laughs> check out these awesome fern shirts. Yeah! That's Sam is wearing, cool. dear god, Sam is wearing, wearing one. On the shirt. There's drool on your Look arm. Look at all these cool oh. details. <laughs> anyway, check them out, they're in our stores. Oh, oh, oh look at Mr. on the chest. <laughs> I know, I love it. Awesome. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> <sighs> Liam. Oh man, I got yeah. some too, and it's a good one. <laughs> uh, it's not Fern Week, it's Ashley Week. I am so excited to oh. announce that Critical Role, The Mighty Nine Origins, Yasha, Yasha! is now available. Yes. Created in partnership with Dark Horse Comics, it's written by Cecil Castellucci alongside our very own Matthew Mercer and Ashley Jenkins. Yeah. 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 With amazing art by Will Kirkby, Kirk done by colorist Diana Sousa and letterer Ariana Mayer. Yes. Mayer. Yes. This book, it's here. This book is gorgeous. The pages of this book are gorgeous, and it's available now. So grab your copy at your friendly local comic book shop or bookstore. Yeah. Take it home with you, Ash. Take it home. Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited. Do you want me to sign it? <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> it smells like mint and pickles. It does. It it's a gross like combo. It's a lot of smell. <laughs> it's, oh it's a weird, That's this is the weirdest smell. Get it out, get it out. Like I want to eat the pickles, but I also feel a little nauseous. Uh, so like, I, I couldn't eat the pickles. Well, I'm not touching those pickles. On that note, <laughs> let's go ahead and jump into tonight's episode of Critical Role. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Till we reach the top, two by two we fall. Will we meet our friend or meet our destiny? Hold your breath and roll. How do you want to do this? It's Thursday night. All ye critters, come join us. It's time to continue our flight. There is magic and mystery. Who knows what will happen? He might. Sure, we never give up on the fight. From the healer to the renegade, we all share the same goal. Adding more allies, taking more chances. Hold your breath and roll. We will certainly try. It's Thursday night. All ye critters, come join us. It's time to continue our From darkness our friendship will rise But one thing's for sure We never give up on the fight Oh, get ready It's Thursday night And welcome back. So, last we left off, Bell's Hells in the city of Basaris, chasing down Armand Treshi, a fugitive from the Mahan House Treshi in Drusar. 
who seem to have been caught up in a number of problems in the city, mainly involving this Shade Mother business, and was uh, turned in by Lady Imoth after you had turned her in. He fled the city, and you've been chasing ever since. Upon arriving here in the city of Basaris, in the middle of the Hellcatch Valley, you also uncovered a number of interesting elements. One that he has held up within the Seat of Disdain, the House of Power, the Fortress of Power, for the Paragon's Call that he was so entwined with, and also managed to have a strange run-in with an assassin that was <laughs> revealed chasing down <laughs> the Calloways, um, revealing himself when you met Bertie Calloway. You then traveled with Bertie along to a secret laboratory where she and Ollie, our friend's father, had been allied with another strange ally of Treshi's that you had encountered once before, Ira Wendigoth, the Nightmare King. It seemed that the Calloway family had been working while she was being kept by uh, her grandmother Mor Morrigan in the Feywild to understand the nature of the Red Moon Ruidus, of which it seems or your friend Fern here was born under. Now, as part of this uh, interest in, in ascertaining its nature in hopes of protecting their child from its strange, uh, continuous aberration within the Fey Realm, Ira seemed to have acquired the item he needed that you had delivered from Mori to complete this device that the Calloways had been completing with him, and then he absconded with this information before revealing some other odd connections to other weird mysteries that float about here on the continent of Marquette. Some tense encounter and uh, realizations with your parents, Fern, and a possible path to reconciliation, at the very least getting everything out in the open. Uh, it was decided that Ollie would stay back uh, while Bertie would take you uh, on her crawler alongside yours back to the city of Basaris to look into some of this trashy business. You also discovered upon reaching out uh, fresh cut grass to Dancer that it seemed there was uh, some tension in the past you weren't aware of, a emotional request to not find them and realizing that you may have been responsible in some way, shape or form for the dire end of your previous group, you reached a threshold of stress and tension and began to assault your friends. In this brief altercation, you managed to calm Fresh Cut Grass, and in these tense realizations and uh, hurled insults, the rest of you sat there a bit scattered, broken and confused. You, Ladna, dealing with the re-emerging influence of one Delilah within yourself, and what that draw might mean should you give in to it. It seems that the only functional mind at the moment, uh, as pointed out by Ashton, is Orem, and the rest of you have some shit to work out. But after spending a night of rest here in the laboratory, shortly after sunrise, you once again stood onto the crawler that you had purchased and had worked on by Imahara Joe alongside Birdie's uh, crawler, and then rode off into the dusty desert of the Hellcatch back towards the city. And that's where we pick up from here. So, as the sun slowly begins to rise higher, higher on the horizon, the blue sky getting more and more vibrantly blue, the day getting warmer, the sweat beginning to build beneath your armor and clothing, uh, I would like one of you to roll a d20, just to kind of ascertain if the day is eventful, or the next few hours of travel are eventful before you uh, I got that. get to the city. Uh, that's a 15. Fifteen. Okay. The multi-hour excursion back to the city goes without issue. Oh, great! Early enough in the morning, where it seems no sort of uh, tense business was waiting for you, as unlike your journey <laughs> towards the laboratory. Uh -huh. But after a few hours, some kind of loudly shouted conversation over the roaring sound of these automatons' legs digging into the ground behind you, the front wheels just tearing into the dust and rock and shale you eventually begin to see the definitive shape of Basarus on the horizon as you go past one of the long, bowing bridges over the ravine below, and you can see the climbing red walls of the Carmine Curtain. And before long, you are back in the familiar township itself. The bustling, strange, 
sometimes aggressively dressed populace of Basra sits around you. You tear in past the central walls of the Carmine Curtain, and you watch as Birdie kind of skids off to the side and comes to rest. The growling purr of the arcane engines within the automaton coming to a restful state, the legs kind of curling down to allow you to disembark from the machines as you all kind of pull back the bits of cloth and uh, face masks you were keeping the dust from being inhaled. Birdie pulls her goggles up, kind of dusts off her face a bit. Well, all right, I guess we're here now. Um, uh, I'm probably going to make myself kind of scarce given the fact that you uh, is out there somewhere. I don't entirely trust those who've been working towards the demise of me and my husband and my daughter for some time, so I got what I came for originally, but just want to make sure you got back here safe. Um, is there anything else you need from me? I, 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 I don't think so. All right, well, seems y'all had a means of getting in touch with me to begin with, I guess, if anything comes up or any words of warning, anything that might behoove what we're trying to do back in figuring out our next port of the path ahead, now that we have an idea of what's kind of looking to transpire with some of these folks you're tangled with, you know, if we can be of assistance, all let us know. In the meantime, we'll just Start looking to see if we can figure out where they're setting up shop to the east, I guess it was. Are you going to be in the hideaway? I think so, for the time being, unless we have to leave it, or... I mean, I'll probably be doing some runs out and about, just trying to gauge the terrain and see if I can... see if I can be helpful. All right. Make up for some mistakes and misplaced trust, it seems, so... Well, if you need us, we should be here for at least a little while longer. Don't hesitate to come and call. Okay, well, shouldn't be too hard to find you. You're a bunch of sore thumbs out here in the dust bowl, so. Anyway, I'm gonna go grab me a quick meal to taste Taldori, because, you know, might as well while I'm here. And then uh, shove off from there, goes ahead and starts walking the uh, the beast of a crawler over to uh, a side hitching area, kind of like <laughs> behind her. She sets it over and chains it to the side. Stay safe, I suppose. Make sure y'all don't go uh, disappearing again. Well, I don't seem there's much of a reason to. Kind of out in the open now. Just be careful. You too. It was really nice to meet or hang out with you, Birdie. Um, yes, let us know if you need anything, and we can we can do the same. Can that? Oh, you want to give me a hug? If. All right. And she kind of finishes chaining it up and it just runs over and kind of like quickly comes, but then just kind of gingerly takes the moment to hold you and just kind of rock with you a little bit. This feels nice. It does. Thought about it often. Me too. <laughs> I guess we'll be in touch, and um, if anything comes our way that seems to seems to align with what you're doing and looking for, since a lot of our paths are converging, interest-wise, we'll find a way to let you know. Okay. Until then. Until then. She pulls her goggles down and takes her scarf and kind of tucks it around and kind of adjusts her uh, posture a little bit. You know, to not carve quite a quite a visage. <laughs> and then bounds off, being the tater that she is, across the road, leaving little pff, 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 tufts of <laughs> dirt and dust behind her. <laughs> okay. How are you feeling? I'm feeling... I'm feeling okay, I think. Considering, uh... Lots of stuff happened that I 
just found out. <laughs> um, but I'm okay. I'm okay. I think. And we just got to keep moving forward, you know? Mm-hmm. So I guess we have found out a lot about a lot and each other. Yeah. Where should we head first? Are you wanting to see Dancer first or we should head straight to Disdain? I mean, we could just... You no, know, we could just park, or we could go get a drink, figure out dancer, if that's what you're Is up for. What you're up for? <laughs> you don't have to be. I, I mean, I'm, I'm curious, but I'm a little nervous that if we head over there, that you might um give a little switcheroo again. I, I don't think so. I am. I mean, I'm, I'm not. I'm nervous too, but uh, maybe she'll have an answer about why why that happened or can help prevent it from happening again although i don't know if she wants to see me I, I guess i could reach out to her and just find out she might go running mm -hmm. wait are you talking about you actually want to see dancer well yeah oh no what do you mean? Oh, fuck no. Why? You gotta send like an emissary for you or something. Why? Because when you get eyes on her, you're gonna go all fucking. <laughs> oh, oh, come not. on now. Right. You're just gonna be like, whack, whack, it's arterial spray. And then they'll be tracking the crime scene and I it'll lead right to us. I didn't Me. even know. I'm Listen, I'm sorry that I that I clobbered you a little bit. But a little nicks. Just a little, little. I didn't, it wasn't me. Little I, nicks with a buzz saw. <laughs> I told you you should take it off of me. No, absolutely not. Well, we gotta unleash that beast when the time is right. Sorry, you know, it within reason. Well, we could for the meeting, though, take it off of you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think when we go to Paragon's Call, we could potentially get piled on by a hundred people. Maybe it's better, if you're up for it, to go see Dancer first. Fine by me, if we can... Find her. How do we do it, too? I mean, how do we not scare Dancer off? Well, we're not very scary people. I mean, you're, you're, not, you're not. You're all real friendly. Uh. <laughs> well, maybe, well, so are you. <laughs> maybe we send in, you know, a... Well, who, we don't even know where she is. I mean, just, just hypothetically, I, I mean, I can reach out to her, but if we were going to send just one or two of us first... Like up on ahead, who do you all think are the nicest of the of the bunch of us? <laughs> I mean, not me, I, right now. Normally, I would have said. Yeah. Yeah. Probably Orem. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's Fern. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, Jesus. You're yeah. you're very un, until someone actually gets to know you, they, they would find you extremely comforting and calming. That is so nice of you to say. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Until they get to know you. That's well. I think yeah, you're real surprises. sweet too, Imogen. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you're pretty polite. Like you've got a lot of manners. That couldn't hurt. You do. You you clearly got other shit going on. It's First, just gonna try to steal shit. No offense. It's real hot. Oh, that's but very true. I yeah. don't know. I feel like I'm not that observant. Take. Well, I'll just see if she's open to it. All right. Did not. Maybe maybe somebody else should should send should, a message. Yeah, should send the message. Actually, let's let's. Mm -hmm. That's actually that's a fair point. Oh, the emissary idea is pretty good, huh? Well, well the old man's I... got a couple ideas in the bee bonnet. I was just assuming that you were full of shit because I know that if you actually thought that that they were gonna go nuts, you would be really down for that. So I just thought you were just trying. I mean, not yet. Shit. I feel like we need to answer, but you know, eventually. Ah, uh, okay. So I no problem. I could reach out to Dancer. Can't but I, have you done that before? Reach to out her? Not to, to her answer. specifically? No. And you can do it even if you've never met her. As long as I'm familiar with her, you could describe her to me. Okay. And what are you going to say? Exactly. I have no idea. I mean, we've detained the beast known <laughs> as FCG. <laughs> well, it's totally safe. We've wiped the memory. We need you to help us put the pieces back together for good. Uh, the truth. Mm. What is yes, she? He's not wrong. I'm a, a bit of a monster. No, you're not. A little bit. No more than the rest of us. 
Except for this one. I'm just worried that... I don't know what set me off. Well, uh, And I just... Maybe I just shouldn't do anything for a while until I know, you know? Yeah, probably right. You what know, was it that set you off? Leading up to all of this, these past handful of days, you've been kind of, you know, stressed a little, not yourself. And we have seen some weird moments from you outside of that, you know, like moments where you kind of started glitching out a little yeah. bit. Mm -hmm. And you seemed kind of down and, and depressed. Are you feeling depressed now? I don't have any feelings. I'm a, I'm a robotic entity. You not true. Feelings, that's not true. FCG. No. You definitely have feelings because you were very angry at all of yes. us. You yelled very mean things. I'm sorry. You look like you feel sad now. Do you feel sad right now? Because you went a little... What is? What does that feel like? Oh, what emotions are tricky. Wait, this bears an idea. Oh, you, you guys just, keep going. Can uh, you describe it with wood? I turn my back. I describe everything with wood. <laughs> 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 and you just see shit flying. <laughs> <laughs> Chetney chisel hands. No. Maybe, maybe <laughs> Chetney chisel hands. <laughs> Under these fingernails is each a different bit. <laughs> <laughs> Veiny ass fucking knuckles. Oh, like, wow. Well. It's like snow. <laughs> <laughs> Except it's wood. <laughs> 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 uh, uh. <laughs> uh, if you'd like to reach out. All right. Well, here's an idea. Oh, what if we do detain you? And what tell Dancer that. Okay. Like, put me in a net, wrap up my wheel. Something. Put put one of those boots. Something. Oh, like, a park, like, like a parking park boot. boot. You could just act like, maybe we can, really you can just act like they're, they're shut down. You know what I mean? Act like it? <clears throat> yeah, like we can wheel you in. Well, I don't want to lie to anybody. It's not lying if you don't tell a lie. That's right, if you don't say anything. <laughs> I think we just promised. Yeah, we could tell the lie. That's true. So you're just, you're just going, yeah, you're just doing the cold fish. Where'd you get those pickles? <laughs> there was a vendor up the street. Yo, did you so want strange to in this climate. You're eating, you're, you're eating Bosra's oh, nice street funny. food. You are braver than I thought. <laughs> but the whole it point keeps, of this. It's also, the desert. It keeps. Yeah. It makes There's a hobgoblin back there with a carter just like, you want more? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of right now, actually. Uh, get them quick. They're hard to find and they don't keep real long. <laughs> <laughs> They're really good. I'm down. Add a little toothpaste. <laughs> Oh, what? No. What? That's the weirdest thing you've ever said, Imogen. <laughs> but if the whole point of this is to get to the bottom of things and you're genuine, then we don't need any kind of trickery. I agree. Why don't we bind you up for the sake of dancers' All right. comfort and, and let them know that? And they might come in angry, they might come in terrified. Okay. But you'll have done all you can today to make an effort. <laughs> sure. Um, I'll put on my my grapple cannon and I'll I'll let out the line and you guys can wrap it around me. All right. Imagine that you, you can I mean, get into We have rope, but all right. Our Enjoy. heads, can you can you send a vision of FCG to them? No, I don't think so, but I could let them know, I mean, that, that we've captured them and... Okay. I'm just trying to figure out how we make it feel safe for Dancer to meet with us. Yeah. Well, what was Dancer's job? What did she do? She's a tinkerer of, of things and she, she builds things and, and uh, she's a marvel with... Uh, with all kinds of machinery and tools and I mean her job was we we were you know adventurers for hire like is, like sort of like we are now is there a world where we we say something like that to her like we want to of course again this is lying but um, I don't have a problem with that at all um, <clears throat> if we tell her you know like we have a something we need to help your expertise with. Mm hmm And then we see her and then we're like, oh, oh here. Oh, like hire her. Yeah. Or, or That's interesting. I mean, her. she's for hire. For sure would probably show up. Right. No. Is she important And then just have FCG? 
Of course, she made me. Uh, I don't know if that's true. Yeah, I feel like that was under some debate at this point. Well, she made me what I am. Maybe she just turned you back on, but maybe she messed up. Maybe that's why things are difficult. Things are getting jumbled up. Maybe. But the first point is still true. She's important to you. Yeah. So you'd want her to know that you're being honest and sorry. What if we bring your shredder arm to her? Give it to her. Mm. That's fine with me. Doesn't, doesn't FCG need that arm? Maybe after talking, they'll get it back. I don't know, how important is she is my question. Do you have an opinion on this? Because I have an opinion on this. Regardless of all of it, we have to find her first. So I do have to send a message. Right? Yeah. Right? I mean, we can at the very least offer the one thing that clearly she wants, which is a little bit of closure from this. I hate to be running from this shit for the rest of my fucking life. How do you know she wants closure? Anyone that freaked out and panicked wants to not feel freaked out and panicked, and has clearly spent a very long time feeling freaked out and panicked. Anything would be better. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cast sending and try to reach out to dancer. Okay. Have to meet one of us in a public spot. Dancer, we've captured your automaton. Preparing to disassemble. Is that true? Where can we meet if you're interested in recouping some costs? We're in Bosserus. Make a deception check for me. Oh, you're so cold. Can I give her guidance? Sure. Guidance. Boop. Okay. Nineteen. Nineteen. I take it back. You're not the nice one. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Not too much of a wait before Dancer responds. I'm kind of curious which automaton you're talking about, but I'm listening. I'm having a liquid breakfast at the Revel and Break. Revel and Break. Oh, shit. shit. Where's that? Have we heard that before? Revel and Break, those of you who are from Bastos would know, is yes, a know. drinking establishment in the undercarriage, <laughs> not far from where you last stayed here in the city. Wonderful. Yep, there we go. Let's head over. Oh boy, I'm scared. <clears throat> Out of curiosity, Ashton, what was that uh, <laughs> twisted face you just made? I was just impressed by the sheer cold calculatingness of that. I was very well done, my god. It was a little scary. It hadn't occurred to me. I was very capable. I... Insight check. <laughs> something something about the way you said dream. Maybe I dream of a lot of things. I know you do. <laughs> Revel and break, right? Are you genuinely wanting to? I'll, I'll insight check. <laughs> All right, so you can make deception or persuasion, your choice, you don't have to say which, and just give me a number. 18. Uh, 15. I'm telling the truth, darling. I would never dream of it. Ever. Stop making that face. I can't make faces. <laughs> <laughs> I just Man, wear them. That's how you emote so clearly. I know. Right? I just wear them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <clears throat> You notice uh, earlobes have formed. <laughs> Not ears. First the toes. Just lobes. <laughs> Dangly lobes. I hate well, this so much. <laughs> now we know where she is, is, but I don't think that we should all rush over like we were saying. I mean, one or two of us should go in. <clears throat> that yeah. place is kind of a shithole. I mean, isn't everything here? Terrible idea. <clears throat> Even for this place, it's 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 pretty rough. Yeah, it's definitely like it, it's not like. The roughest here, it's definitely for like travelers uh, and the weary or needing to work out some aggression folk of the city. It's definitely, it's definitely like the shitty watering hole amongst shitty watering holes of that region of the city. 
Not the biggest dive, but pretty divey. I mean, would it be insane for me to Two actually bucks. mention if someone tries to <laughs> offer you anything, don't 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 well, take it just if uh just considering who kind of who kind of hangs out there. Or? I would tell you nobody offers you shit okay, at the herbal and break. Okay, you buy your own drink. Just doing a little reading. <laughs> yeah. We don't all have to go in. That's fine. Laudan and I can yeah. hang out on the outside. So when oh, she inevitably you're... runs, I see what you're referring to. Mm. Ooh, we can close liner. Yep. Well, that's well, a video. I mean, oh, anything outside right. of alcohol, maybe. Okay. Yeah. No, that was that was definitely what I was gotcha, I was gotcha. pointing at. Is if anything, everybody offers you anything that isn't alcohol, don't don't take it. Fair enough. So. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Chetney and I will stand guard. Should we bring FCG in right away, or? But maybe we can Ooh. hold him outside. That way, if she does want to come in and see them, you know, you're right there. You're ready. What did you just tell her? You said that you shut me down, or you've just captured me? Preparing captured you and preparing to disassemble. Oh, preparing to disassemble. Well, never. I know, but just hearing the words. Who would you feel most comfortable with disassembling you if it came down to that? Shh. <laughs> Oh boy. He's the most skilled. That's probably Gen true. Finesse, baby. You wouldn't feel a thing. He's the most skilled, but I worry about that ticker of his. It could go at any moment. <laughs> <laughs> I could make you real calm before I did it. That scares me what more. <laughs> I'm just saying. I think Ashton. Thank you. A nice big clonk on the head and <laughs> flats out. That's <laughs> really the way to go. <laughs> That's the weirdest short circuit reboot. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Uh, do you mind if I come in with you? Just to be some muscle in the corner. I'll hang outside with you guys. All right. Do you, want, do you want to take the buzz saw? Uh, a... I'll carry it. Okay. I'm unassuming. As we're going, did Dancer work for or with any like repeat clients or anybody that would uh, be interested in her automatons or collecting them as she, found again? She went. She frequented uh, a few salvage yards in town, of which I remember the names. Um, and we were hired by folks in town, but I... No, like, repeat vendors, right? Anybody she might owe a debt to? A debt? I mean... Like a repo where, Where's the, the the big old salvage yards? Oh, you're talking about the... Um, ye old salvage yards? The ye, ye old, <laughs> ye old salvage yards. Uh, I mean, there's, there's a number, number of places there. There's the... Uh, the East Dregs has the Finders Takers, which is uh, East Dregs. Finders or Takers. Easter That's where Esmer is, where he went and had the bomb situated there. Oh yeah, Esmer. Yeah. Okay. Her, um, her former lover. Yep. Game. There's there's a number of shops and places. Um, Catch. And the Sonyan Row is probably the one place you're thinking of that has like the most kind of scavenger scrapyard feels. That's that's where Imahar Joe oh, is, God. and a lot of the sure. uh, what's referred to as the the roaches. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So yeah, those not make the most sense. Sorry. All I heard was eggs and roaches now. Yeah. Wow. No. So what's the plan? All right, I hand over my buzzsaw to Orem, and I... And we head over to Revel and Trust fall into the firm. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just... You, you sure, yeah, start wrap wrapping me up. Wrap myself. Okay. So you head over towards the undercarriage, um, which is less... Intense when it's this early in the day. You know, you're probably at this point a um, couple hours shy of noon, and so still definitely has that kind of morning energy to it. Folks are coming out into the sunlight and trying to shield themselves from the heat and the the kind of bleariness that their eyes are currently dealing with, while others are out there uh, in the in the process of probably even finishing their night. <laughs> a couple of stumbling folks eventually coming back after a night of whatever. Revelry or debauchery they had gotten themselves involved with. Out of boy. Um, but upon approaching the outside of this caravanserai, um, you know, last time you were here was evening and bustling. Now it's fairly empty, other than a few folks keeping watch, a couple of other individuals that are passed out. Um, and here upon the outside of the Revel and Break, you can see it's a it's a ramshackle watering hole. Um, uh, looks to be kind of a, a drinking spot that is partially open, like there's an entryway, but the area where most folks drink, uh, there is an, kind of an opening, like almost like a skylight that just looks above um, with a, what looks to be a, like a thick silk that can be drawn to close it in case the weather gets tumultuous, but at the time being, it's kind of like a partially shaded open feel, as there are a number of tables kind of scattered about with chairs around them. You can see there's a central pit that's dug into the ground. Looks like we're maybe, uh, 
individuals that need to work out their aggressions or disagreements can go to, but it's also maybe a little early in the day for that. Um, there's maybe only three patrons that are visible within the room at a quick glance, um, one of which looks to be a uh, female in their, oh, it's kind of hard to see at this distance, um, but you do see a woman with kind of jet black hair, kind of olive skin, light brown eyes, uh, sitting at a table, kind of head and their palm in one hand, kind of holding their face, and a like a big, kind of dark red clay mug on the table next to them, with their arm kind of draped over the edge of it. But they don't seem to notice you stepping towards the front entryway. Just head straight over to that table. Okay. I, uh, before coming in, took the arm and wrapped it in the cloak that we've been wearing cloaks occasionally, so it's just like a package under the arm. Gotcha. Is there, um, can we, do you want me to take the back or you take the back or you want the front? <laughs> what well, which do you prefer? The back. I'll take the front. <laughs> so I'll just make my way, if there's a back door to this. <laughs> I'll just stay here with FCG. Stay here! <laughs> <laughs> it's too far now. I've gone too far. Okay. Park by the front door and just watch Disarm and banded the really valuable thing, so you know. Yes. So as you walk through, um, Orem, you pick it up. Um, just a brief kind of a, a smell in the air. Like very faint, very faint, but for like for an open air space, there's kind of a. Maybe it's towards the table, so like there's a, a very faint mustiness that just kind of hangs in the air. Um, but you approach the table, and the woman kind of looks through the spreading of the kind of middle fingers over at you, and kind of sits up, looks over, and you can see there is a uh, what looks to be a, a tattoo of a star on the right cheek. It's kind of just marked right there. A pretty like heavy hood and cloak that kind of rests uh, over the shoulders and kind of hangs down past the chair and collects at the base across the floor. Um, the other hand, as you get close, it looked like it was kind of gloved and wrapped, but now you can see it is a uh, metallic prosthetic. It is a, a tinkered prosthetic. You can see all sorts of like mechanical cables and uh, pulleys and, and odd kind of uh, clockwork elements. And as it moves, you can see there's like a jerkiness to it. It is, it is imperfect and does not move smoothly, but it seems functional enough. And as it just kind of sits up, it kind of like, kind of grabs onto the side of the table. You can see there's almost like a bit of, bit of a shift in her physicality to adjust for its sudden and strange movements before looking up at the two of you. Well, I assume by your um, direct approach that you're the ones who contacted me? That's right, we are. Morning, ma'am. Based on the, uh, Based on the rapid series of events, I think I have an idea of the automaton you're talking about. Let's go ahead and takes a sip, and you can see there's like that bit of a hungover haze to her eyes. A bit of a weird one, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I can say that. And you're responsible for all that? I mean, I was. Bottom, fair and square. So, all that personality, that was before you? Oh, yeah, I'd love it. I wish I could take credit for all that, but I think maybe in the long run, that was part of the problem. See, all the rest of the things that I make myself, they listen. They don't, mm. they don't become challenging. I see. And this I one was quite challenging. <laughs> so did you... Or Took him down. Uh, she seated at a table. Mm -hmm. said. All right, so I'll place it down on the table and unfurl. There's an immediate look of recognition and that kind of like that look of somebody that is suddenly remembering something traumatic and then bearing it quickly. I, I think one thing that we were hoping to know. To take thoughts. Okay. Cool is, because uh, we've had such a time with this one, I think we were curious to know what happened. 
that led for them to be this way. I mean, I wish I could tell you. Caught me off guard. As you're starting to read past the thoughts, too, you're immediately like feeling waves of emotion. Um, fear, sadness, but then recollections of joy, kinship. The, the surface thoughts all seem to be revolving around the idea of what went wrong. Don't know why it went wrong. Kind of that, that's the general surface thought you're getting at the moment. We've never seen anything like them. Neither have I. Yeah, and they seemed real friendly. Real sweet. All of a sudden, red eyes. Almost demonic, right? Yeah. Looks like you uh, made it out luckier than I did. I was close. But you did have some good times. Yeah. I mean, I, I took a lot of pride in managing to get him back to whatever he was. How did you do that? Roll a persuasion check. Just like, th th this is to gauge how open they feel. Can I assist? <laughs> yes, you may. Just by looking sweet. So either you can uh, give her advantage or. Advantage. Uh, okay. Uh, 14. 14. I've been here most of my life, and. You know, there are a number of junkers and traders and crawlers and the occasional ascent adventure that scoots through with some findings they need to offload. Now, you know, a bunch of us in the Sanyan Row, we keep an eye out for anything interesting and unique. It's where we, a lot of us kind of craft our tools, and in some cases, our companions. That's kind of where my specialization lies. And Made good money growing up, making small, friendly types that just kind of like pets, if you will. Mm -hmm. This one came through with something else. I wasn't the only one interested. I had to had to pull in a lot of favors to get Joe getting real distracted. <laughs> but went all in. Pretty much everything I'd saved up. Because I knew there was something special about this thing. It was old. Who was the seller? I don't know. Never saw him before, never saw him after. They were, uh, they were just kind of a wandering trader. Inside check. Go for it. Was it an advantage because I still got detect thoughts up? I'd say yeah. Ooh. Well, well done. Nice. Come on. Nice. Twenty-two. Ooh. Twenty-two. Oh! oh more whisper! Well, I don't have anything to read, I do, but it's for a combat, but this isn't combat, so I don't know what to do. Yeah, read it anyway! Okay, this whisper is brought to you by the WizKids Combat Cam. <laughs> what, what, a whisper cam? Whisper cam? Coming soon. Our mm -hmm. whisper cam sponsorship is back with our partners at WizKids, makers of amazing critical role miniatures, enhance your home games with critical role minis. Available at wizkids.io slash crminis. And your local game store. Go. Woo! There you go. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, we get a lot of strange folks that come through and this one was carrying a whole odd batch of things that they had supposedly found on a, a trip somewhere deep in the Rumadam. Rumadam? What, the Hubaha? The Rumadam Desert. Mm -hmm. Hubastank. Oh, <laughs> the Hubastank no. Desert. Were there any uh, peculiar markings on this particular cellar? Anything that we would be able to identify them with? I mean, they wore masks, I knew that. So I don't have much more information to give you. Mm -hmm. so don't get more mysterious than this one. What are you doing these days? 
lifts the cup, kind of sloshes it a little bit. Well, I'm trying to get back to my trade. I'm, it's interesting, after I had, after I had roused FCG and had this companion with capabilities and a few other friends of mine, we kind of decided to change our fortunes a bit instead of sitting back and waiting for adventurers to come by and give us piddlins for our trade. Maybe we'd give a shot at it ourselves. We did pretty good, actually. It wasn't too bad. We started making some, some nice coin and a small name for us. Yeah, moving beyond the hell catch, just working up in the wildlands for a bit, and then we had the incident, and I lost everything. I'm so sorry. Yeah, me too. But you move on. When you live a live a life and grow up in a place as harsh as this, you're not completely un, uh, unfamiliar with the idea of hardship and picking up and pushing forward. Sometimes it's the only chance. It's the only real path you got. How did you get them back online? Oh, weeks of tinkering. There was something there, there was a hum. It wasn't like they were broken, they were just dormant. They were just, mm. there was something. There was something. Yeah, we're thinking about opening them up, getting a real good look at everything in there, but oh. didn't want to damage it, you know? I'll just be careful, you know? If you see anything that glows, don't pull it out. <laughs> oh, there's glowing stuff? Oh yeah, old, you know, energy centers and power cores that keep most automatons going, that's part of their initial design, but uh. even me tinkering around, this was, this was old shit. Really? Yeah, no, this was, this was craft far beyond anything I'd ever seen, so I didn't mess with much, because I didn't want to mess it up. Did I you just, have to replace anything? No, no replacement, just more, like things were kind of dislodged a little bit. All right. So I had to just <laughs> figure out where to reconnect them, and then all of a sudden one day, we had FCG. Um, I've never, there's something special about that one. I'd heard rumors for recent years of automatons, personalities, you know, the stories you hear of the old pre-divergence and yeah, stuff. Yeah, we so, hear some of that stuff too. So, uh, it just seems, well, it seems like rumor until you finally Meet one, or in this case, buy one. <laughs> they are special. We we agree. Um, there's one detail we're leaving out till now. Um, we still kind of care about them. I'm sorry, and I brought this, and I nudge it across the table, standing on my chair. FCG sent that. Oh, I I'm not going to pretend to know what you went through. It sounds terrible, man. But um, we've spent enough time with letters to get a, a sense of what you liked in the beginning. It saved our lives. Uh, well, a lot. And, um,. I don't know if you'd be up for it, but we've got them bound up, one-armed. Their know. eyes are blue, currently. I don't know if you're looking for closure or understanding, but fresh-cut grass is. You don't owe them anything. You don't have to go, but that's a gift for under the arm. You can keep it. I hope you give it back. But it's a gesture of goodwill something. I hope it's worth the good time you had with them. Make a persuasion check. Is anybody watching this shit, by the way, in the bar? Not really. Okay, just checking. Bartenders keeping an eye in case anyone's putting up a hand to order something, but no one's paying close attention. Oh, okay. 
I have no modifier, 16. Nice. Oh, you rolled that. I was like, oh. No. <laughs> you catch. No question. And just the surface thoughts reading, rapidly bouncing between trauma and warm memory, trauma, warm memory. This kind of like back and forth of trying to decide. And you watch the kind of close your eyes for a second. <sighs> yeah, let me talk to him. Mm-hmm. Gets up from the table, grabs the arm, kind of holds it at the side. Out there? <clears throat> yeah. <sighs> takes a couple steps, turns around, goes back, takes another big swig. I'm gonna send a message out to FCG that you're gonna hear in your head. Mm-hmm. We're on our way out with her. Owen oh, also, hold me. Okay. We wouldn't let anything happen to you, you have my word. I'm not getting close to them. Just so you know, we won't let you touch them either. Just so we're clear. Yeah, all that profit's gonna be hard. Just kidding. Shit. Bad cop. <laughs> What did you do with the gin? Where should we do something? Should we do something? What do you should mean? I put my hand over your mouth, type of a thing? Oh, like you're ho- holding me hostage? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you have a knife or what do you fight with? You're sure, I, I, I should put my yeah. sickle around your throat or yeah, something? Yeah, yeah, like right okay. up to it. Don't, like, hurt me. No, I wouldn't do anything, but I'll just act like I'm real tough. Oh, should we, are we threatening him? Should I threaten you? No. Yeah, it should happening. What happened? Oh, what yes. I, I, I sent a message to, to Chetney. Oh, he's around back. I, he's around. Chet. What? I think they're coming out. Oh, see oh, oh, fuck. Is this what it's like? Oh. Oh. Yes. Stop. Yes. Have you not? Oh, do you like it? Stop. Most people find it unnerving. Oh, I want you to sing a song and see what happens. Oh, oh I should practice. Okay. I'm coming around. All right. <laughs> Uh, also, Matt, just because we're level seven, I'm, and I want to use it. Uh, I want to use "Know Your Enemy" on Dancer <laughs> as I watch Dancer walk out and size them up. Uh, what, okay. How are their armor class and current HP in comparison Ooh. to mine? Okay. Well, uh, how how often can you do that? Non-stop. Whenever you one want. One minute. You just need one minute Damn, with anybody. That's crazy. Uh, <laughs> they are. All of them are less than yours. They are. They are not as experienced or as hardy as a fighter as you. You get the sense that their strengths lie in their creations. Mm-hmm. 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 As you all begin to step out from the, like the, you actually see this fresh cut grass and the dark, the dark open doorway. Um, you see there's that the bit of sunlight that comes through the kind of open, kind of silk screened roof before they come to the front door, you see this, from the darkness, the shadow. Just this brief flash of dancer before they step back into the shadow of the frame, before they step directly into the doorway and kind of lean against it, holding in one hand the the buzzsaw hand and the other metallic arm that replaces the one that you saw them, or apparently may have removed. They just stand there, leaning in the door, looking at you about 15 feet, not taking another step. (laughs) 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 Dive out of the way for no reason. (laughs) 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 Weirdest TPK we've ever had. (laughs) That's it. My mission has been (laughs) (laughs) accomplished. We didn't check inside him. Oh no! And episode thirty-one is about about on schedule. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, real quick. Yes. DM. Um, is the street busy right now? Is there anybody who, like watching this exchange from? I mean, it's not terribly busy at this hour, but you also are a unique crew having a unique moment in the middle of a unique part of town. So hey, there, we sexy. There's nobody like crouching in the corner going like, what are they doing? But other folks are kind of out of the business who are walking past, other folks that are uh, setting up shop. There are a number of folks that are just kind of glancing over with a curious eye, like you do when something new is happening in your everyday life. 
I kind of just keep an eye on the public. Okay. Mm. Fair enough. Hey. Hello. Smiley day to you. Mm. Haven't heard that in a while. How are you doing? Bad. It's been a while since we've talked. Yeah. Are you, um, are you still having bad dreams? Yeah, this was a bad idea. Ah, uh, uh, don't go. Um, I don't know what I did. I mean, I do, but I don't. But I'm sorry. I just wanted to talk to you because I found some new friends. I don't want to hurt them. And I thought maybe you might know more about me. But also, you know, I belong to you, so if you want to take me back, I'm yours. I promise I won't do it again? I know it's a promise you can't keep. <sighs> Look, FCG. There's a lot of time we spent together that I'm real appreciative of. There's a lot of conversations we've had and a lot of... A lot of personal shit that you've helped me through. But you also took a lot from me, and I can't forget that. Our paths are diverged. They're gone. I just... I don't want you to do to anyone else what you did to me. And if that means trying to figure out what or who you are, then go and do that. How? Where? Who do I ask? How much of me is me, and how much did you put on? I put on very little, and you came out pretty much like this, though you seemed to take to my voice a little bit and mimic me slightly, but... I mean... You came out cheerful. <laughs> you didn't set me to be? I didn't set you to do anything. I just woke you up. You didn't tell me how to take care of people? No. Cure people? You did that on your own. It's part of the reason I found you so helpful and eventually got you as a friend. You're not like anyone else I've met of your type. Um, do you want me to go with you or no? No. Is there... You know, of all the Nesses, Forgive Ness is my favorite. Um, is there anything I could do to, to earn yours? I can't say yes or no, I don't know. Life is uncertain. Maybe in time, maybe we'll never see each other again. I don't think forgiveness is in the cards for right now. And that's okay. It's okay by me, but I'll keep trying. Maybe, maybe I'll figure out a way if I figure out more about me. Figure yourself out first, then we can talk about that. Okay. Um, 
There's something in you. There's some mighty, mighty violent hidden in there. And I just want it as far from me as possible. I don't, I don't hold you completely responsible because knowing you as long as I did, whatever that was, wasn't, I didn't feel like you. But it doesn't mean I still don't think every day what happened. Because I don't remember. Can you tell me a little bit about what, what I did? You really want to know? Yeah. The Division. Terrawin, Nazin, Axer, Oatmeal, Thunderstorm, Pussy. You killed them. You killed them all. Almost killed me. Did something set me off? Was there a, a word or a spell or a earthquake? No, you just broke. You've been acting a little strange leading up to it. We've gone through a few rougher scuffs and some of those creatures followed us outside of the mines and you were helping us recover and I, he just cracked. I don't know how else to explain it. Like a switch went off in your head. Did I look like I was enjoying it? No. But you looked like you were intent on finishing the job. You got away? D did I let you go? Or did you get away? Only you could know that. And if you don't remember, then that's going to be a mystery for the times. Look, figure yourself out. Sort your shit. And if you get to figure out what the hell button goes off inside that head of yours, that weird, ancient metal brain or whatever you got, you can get rid of that, you come back and talk to me, we can begin a road of forgiveness. But until then, you're a time bomb. I don't want any part in it. Okay. Do you, just sorry, if I do, is there a switch, a button, a knob, a wire that these folk can cut, turn me off? I mean, there's one way, but it's real deep inside there and there's no turning you back on if they do. What does it look like? The glowy bit I was telling you about? There's a runic cable. You pull that. It's gonna take a lot of work to put it back. That's what it took me to get you going. Hmm. Okay. Well, sure was nice seeing you. Um, hey, don't drink after like 11. Try to get sleep because you're always cranky when you don't get sleep. Hmm. And find someone to talk to. You're always better when you talk. I know you might not have too many friends in town who like to talk to you, but someone will, even if it's a barkeep or something. You always do better when you talk. Um, and sometimes you forget to eat, so eat, please, to take care of yourself. Kind of looks at the buzzsaw arm. Kind of tosses it a few feet out of the dust. <laughs> 
Guess your fate's with the gods now. I don't know much about that masked person, but I've done a couple dealings with Joe. Maybe he's got something. Thank you. And be careful. She turns around and steps back in, closing the door behind her that had been kind of left ajar when you arrived. <laughs> Why don't we get out of the street? Do you want me to unwrap you? Maybe. That's it? That's all. Fuck. I get too silvered a lot now. <laughs> What's that? What's that? Nothing. What's no, that? just settling in, you know. We should, we should get out of Joe. the street. Yeah. We should talk to Joe. I think uh, the dealer that, that found you. I think Joe knows a little bit about them. They might be able to tell us. Yeah, I mean, our best bet is going further from. back and also maybe. Just if Joe can remember them, think about them, and you get a good enough read sure. off of Joe, maybe you can find them. Okay. Now, or uh, don't we have to go to the... We got a little time, in my opinion. Do they have to go back in the... Uh, the, the water hole? Yep. Revel. Mm -hmm. <sighs> we did not. Revel and break. Ask her yeah. if she put your tongue in, or if that oh. Oh, if that was there. Yeah. No. Uh. <laughs> I feel like I feel like if it had been no. put in, it would have gone. It would have turned by now. That's true. Yeah. When she was talking, did she have a tongue, or did I cut it out of her? She, she formed the words, so I think I think she had. A... So it was like a steam-powered tongue. <laughs> Must have been one of the other folks. <clears throat> she could have gotten it replaced, like her hair. Yeah. Steam-powered tongue. It's not. It's not canon. <laughs> no. <laughs> Look, you've done enough to. I can do it. God. All right. Well, um, to Joe's or or. That seems like an errand. I think that's probably first. Yeah. Do you want me to go there while you guys do other things? I mean, there's... I would love to go. I do want to. Yeah. I do want to be able to. Oh, you want to come with? Yeah. But I'm sure other folk have to get other things and go shopping. Like what? what are you're, you're, Jenny, you're always asking for more shopping. Well, I know I just need wood material. Actually, I do need some paints. Okay. I need some paints. Oh no. Some paints or some paints? No, some paints. Oh, I'm wearing a pair though, right now. No, paints, like colored paints. Oh, do you want to get a point? Mm. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll go get the bus arm. This is yours. <laughs> Use it wisely. Put it on. Spin it. Lock eyes with Chetney. <laughs> Zero sort of expression. Sharpen it a little bit on my finger. Oh, baby. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Gives me an idea. Well, me too. <laughs> Well, it's interesting because she was saying that 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 cable that's connected to your bits. <laughs> uh, um, she had to jostle it into place. Uh, a few things were were misaligned when you were found. What if what if she connected it poorly or, or messed something up in the process, and that's why you keep switching? Like there's two there's two inputs. One for evil, <laughs> evil destruction, yeah. and one for function normal. Can't yeah. get that one wrong. <laughs> she just put me. She put it in the wrong one. Yeah, it's possible. Or no, Maybe no, one no, little cable's no, touching no. the evil part, you know, and the rest of it's in the normal, normal bit. That makes mechanical you sense. Had your wires crossed. Yeah. Two ports. Yeah. One of them. Yeah. yeah. No go. Mm -hmm. I don't know the three. How'd they make it across like that? the chassis? I'm just curious what you were in your past life, because you have this like very helpful side of you. But what if you were like an assassin? Yeah, bro. Ooh, and certain things just take over. Oh, wow. Well, How be an old assassin. are you? You know, like what if you're a thousand years old? Is that even possible? At least, no. Yeah. If we're to if believe he's... the people we're talking to. Look, metal corrodes, okay? It doesn't have the evergreen standing power of wood. It would be wood so rots. much. He would just be dust. What? Wood rots. Not under the right care, it doesn't. Well, not under the right care, it wouldn't. He's magical. 
What if I'm much older and wiser than Chetney? You have to be. You definitely you might are. You be older than all of them. Hmm? What does it feel like? You're a young buck compared to this one. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't give a shit. <laughs> just, a, just a silent little fart and moves on. <laughs> little senile. <laughs> Remember where you are right now, sir? <laughs> <laughs> where are the paints? <laughs> You're wearing them! <laughs> They're down. All right. Where's our crawlers? Right outside. We got them right here. We got to well, maybe any we can more, park them over at Joe's. They don't need any more fixing? <laughs> We're gonna we just got, drive? We got one crawler. We got a crawler. Let's park it over at Joe's. Okay, great. I bet Joe would have some paints. Yeah? What? Oh yeah, probably. If I were Joe, I'd have some paints. Oh, fucking at Joe's it is! Yeah. We're fucking at Joe's. Yeah! <laughs> Joe fucking at Joe's. Joe's. I'm telling you, he Changes the he whole eat at Joe's. Joe, Joe wants to fuck oh, me. Definitely. <laughs> Joe can fuck me. <laughs> Boy, fuck me. <laughs> so heading to Joe's? Joe's? Yeah, but as, as uh, Orm and Imogen walk out the door, uh, he just quietly says to you, I really wanted to ask about pussy, but I couldn't find a way to slip it into the conversation. Oh. 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 I didn't mean it like that. No, yeah, sure. No, you but did. I didn't. What? <laughs> Walk past me. <laughs> 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 Sad thing is, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, the worst to ask me about my t-shirt. Um, <laughs> oh my god, I want that as a merch item now. No, <laughs> I'm not. I, I'm not gonna do it. What? It's what? really fun. Just make merch item. Laura, ask me one. about. Ask me about <laughs> my pussy. Say it. Mm, uh, ask me about my pussy. That would. FCG. That would sell. Bit. You know. Would it? <laughs> Ask me about what my it? pussy t-shirts? Uh, uh, we are going to Joe. That's an uncomfortable in invitation. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't <laughs> know. Fresh cut grass shirt. destroyed my pussy. No. <laughs> there it is. No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, you make your way <laughs> through the street. <laughs> With tongue. I was, I was dancing around. I was dancing around. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, I see what you did there. That's good. Cool. You could have a whole line. My pussy has a buzz saw. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's actually not bad. <laughs> if you see my pussy, call this number. <laughs> oh my god. Sorry. Well, it was a good run. Sorry. It was a good run. <laughs> we made it to this episode and no further. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, weren't you the one-eyed monster? Yeah. I was. Yeah, I the one-eyed monster slayed my pussy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. No! <laughs> These are, this is canon. It is. That is canon. I, I know. The flesh hug is but off, but that did. is. Sam, <laughs> what's wrong with you? I. <laughs> I'm just I'm yes sanding <laughs> that. Oh. I mean, he this did whole just time. shove a cigar, dry pasta, and <laughs> yeah. pickle, this Slim Jim. whole time. All of that led up to yeah. the yeah. fucking this joke. Moment. You asshole. Oh. Well played. Okay. Wow. Oh. Wow. So, returning to the southern streets that surround the Samagunda Strip, you come to the heavy industrial reach known as the Sanyan Row, the familiar cluttered streets. That are the outskirts of the ends, the the clumps and piles of partially cobbled or abandoned scrap, the rusted and useless bits of metal intertwined with uh, individuals that are in the process of prying bits apart and uh, having conversations and small trades in the street before you arrive, and they scatter off into the shadows until eventually return to the familiar outside of Imahara Joe's shop. Uh, you can see there's somebody on the inside in the process of finishing a deal with Imahara. Uh, contracts being written out, an exchange of money before the individual leaves, and he looks over and sees you as you approach. Oh, um, hi. Uh, welcome. Do you need repairs again? What have no, you done? Hey, have you destroyed? We need. Do you have? Do you have paints? Uh, yeah, we have some. We have some paints here. Some some metal based paints, if you'd like. Yeah. Metal based. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Joe. They could work on other things. No. All right, just show, show me what show me what you have. Wow. Oh, it's okay. 
pay to try new things, Chutney. Vampire based, Lodna. Maybe you can, you can give it a nice treat. Betray treating. thyself. Oh. Maybe like a, a Maybe. multimedia situation, yes. you know, could add like a little just extra something. Just extra elevate shiny. your art. I mean, even just like some pigment, I, I can spit in it and be fine. It's just metal based. You know what? Here, I'll, I'll, t- I'll tell you what. I have an idea. And he watches you like climbs up onto the tables and like reaches to one of the upper shelves and pulls down this like small glass pot, like a like a semi-translucent jar that you can see inside has like a like a dark blue coloration to it. And in the way it moves, like it has that kind of thicker feel to it, like a paint does. And he goes, so this is one of the bases of paints, but, uh, and he goes and runs off to another area, reaches into a box and pulls out this like cluster of, of rocks, sets it down and kind of like <clears throat> pulls one off, brings it back and holds it on the bottom. And you watch as all of a sudden the color gets darker on the bottom. If you magnetize the bottom of it, it pulls the metal from the paint and draws it to the bottom of the pot, which leaves the top of it metal free. Oh my God. I knew there was a way we could work together and you found the way. Huh? Science. It'll get you. Boy, I hope you do that to all your paints. Oh my God. Yes, thank you. I just need a little time. Okay, well, uh, for this pot here, it'll be Eight silver. If you want the magnet as well, that'll be an additional two silver. Put good, good gold for the batch. You got it. If you it. want blue, what Wonderful. color do you want? Yeah. Do you want multiple colors? It's just this color. Multiple, if you got them. Uh, I do have the primaries and a few secondaries. You yeah. can mix them to make tertiaries if you yeah. prefer. Yeah. Let's go. All in. Creativity is bustling, Joe. There's no time to fucking waste. All right, you're right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And he goes and like grabs like three more magnets and sets them down on the table. Runs over, and starts pulling off into the pots. One like. <laughs> I'll clean that later. Uh, pulls down. It's got a blue, a green, a yellow, a red. Uh, what looks to be sort of a brown mixture. He's like, yeah, I was messing with that. Don't know what it turned out, but it might work for you. Sure. Um, what looks to be like a jet black coloration. Oh yeah. And he's like, this. Uh, you can probably mix and make most things you need from this set. I'm pretty sure. I'm not much of like an artist myself when it comes to that. This is mainly just for like large don't splash so paints so and emblems. Sure. Please don't degrade yourself. Come on. Look man. at what it's you're in the eye of the beholder. So much I, art. You're right. I'm bad about that. I appreciate that. Um, I'll have a safety sign. Put it a solid four gold. You got it. An investment in the future. Oh, shit. Does that mean all of our gifts are going to have color on them now? Just bought a, bought a pot of brown Listen, paint. Okay. There's no reason to set expectation out there. Just let the artist work. Four brown gold. Brown paint? <sighs> brown wood. Stand. What will they think of next? Oh, oh my God. Learned something about you. Okay. We came. I saw uh, uh, Imahara Joe. We came to ask. Um, yeah, yeah. What do you, What do you got? We um, a couple important questions. Yeah. Oh, more than one. Well, you are many. What questions. were you going to ask? The thing that we came here to ask All about right. the person who sold. Yes. Yeah, so you know when when FCG came through for the first time and Dancer bought them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that vendor. Yeah. What do you know about them? Dancer seemed cryptic. Not much. They've only come through about three times in the past few years. Mm-hmm. Um, we need as much information as you can give. Tall person, I'm pretty sure masculine presenting at least. Um, it's a really intricate metal mask. They wore dark hood cloak and uh, yeah. And it's from by the name D. D? D? D. Always messed. Doom. Holy shit, it's Dr. Oh Doom. In the interactions we had. Metal mask. Uh, do they come through like once a year specifically, or is it just whenever? No, no, that's, it just kind of seemed sporadic. It wasn't like a clockwork scenario, but they, they came through once about five years ago and brought a whole manner of strange, fantastical pieces of Recovered ruins and and you know automaton pieces, some that stemmed from, uh, I mean, cultures of history I didn't even recognize necessarily. Um, and actually, a, a lot of the original upgrades and ideas that we had for like some of the some of the ruined ca- crawler chassis and like the more recent versions of the uh, skirmisher crawlers, a lot of that was kind of based on the initial uh, materials that I bought from him and just kind of, you know. Figured out how it functioned together and incorporated that into the designs, and as such, they can travel faster. And it seems to be much more uh, reliable 
as far as uh, you know, power input goes. So uh, most most of it's just in pieces, uh, but often occasionally it comes through with with actual you know what can be considered weaponry or. Uh, uh, but that that was the first thing that came through with an actual uh, like full automaton, at least by the time they got to me. Um, and it's always ancient bits and baubles? As far as I know, yeah. They didn't say much. I definitely inquired, and they say they just kind of run, do the rounds, I think was what they said was the term. The, the Rumadon Desert? Rumadon? Yeah, Desert. yeah. Primarily, I think it's where. I think so. Do you know of any ruins out there? Uh, I haven't traveled up there. I've kind of just stayed in this space. There's, I mean, there's ruins all over. You know, a lot of, a lot of ancient spaces buried, which, mm. you know, makes for a lot of good work for folks. I think within your line of work as mercenaries, <laughs> um, and occasionally makes for some fun, some fun findings from people like D or other individuals. Which, by the way, if you ever come across any sort of odd ancient. Uh, Technology or strange, you know, arcane segments of any kind, really. Like, bring them to me first. I'd definitely be interested in checking them out. So, you know about arcane mixed with technology? I mean, that's kind of my specialty out here, yeah. So, Dancer made mention that when she was bringing FCG back online, mm-hmm. um, that uh, there was a, a glowing, I don't know, a crystal or something, mm-hmm. um, and the cable leading to it. She said it was an arcane cane, like r- runic. Runic cane, yeah. I mean, technical term is the uh, uh, the lay tether, but yeah, right. uh, there for most devices, uh, it points to a number of the similar, you know, energy orbs that you've seen in the shop before. That you know, there's like only. Actually, at this point, only two ones that are currently set up, and they're like mm-hmm. hanging by chain uh, arrangements, like they're in, waiting to be put into or put back into different automatons that he's currently working on. But he's like, these these are generally utilized as a power source and kind of the the cradle for the various enchantments that m- you know motivate an automaton to be itself and to function as intended. Um, so the, uh, the lay tether is essentially the uh, the point that takes and channels a lot of that arcane energy and the inherent enchantments to the various runic imprints across the body that then convey the the means of locomotion, the means of following direction, and in some cases uh, preset uh, runic enchantments within. So yeah, that, I believe that's what they're referring to. So if that lay tether was um, jostled or misaligned, it, it, it could set things off in a weird way, potentially? Uh, I imagine so. There's usually like a, a blast of arcane feedback, and whatever the uh, whatever the autotom may be ceases to function um, or explodes. Huh. Okay. All right. Um, That's something. Yeah. Do you know of anyone who who is a specialist in in arcane uh, ancient arcane technology? Technology. I mean, ambassadors, that's kind of me. Uh, beyond that, you're probably likely to want to hit up one of the universities. Eos? Eos would likely have some, Drusar would. Uh, I'd say up in Stratos, but uh, they're a bit far, a bit cold. Uh, more on Corel. There's some really great universities there. Those are probably your best bets, but uh, you know, I, I, I dabble. <laughs> in your head, you hear. Would it be massively inappropriate for for Joe to take a look at that tether and, and see? Not at all. I don't know if that's strange or not. I got no problem with it. Would you be able to to take a look at, at the tether um, that is holding FCG's core? You, you see this like <laughs> the, this odd rush, almost not not quite a blush. Uh, to Joe's face, but like a a simultaneous confluence of extreme excitement and acknowledgement of the delicacy of such a maneuver. Kind of like a yes, yes. I it, if if you are okay with that. Um, sure. Is there? Yeah, of course. I mean, 
Is it dangerous? Yeah, we don't want to touch it. No, no, no. I mean, I, it's fine. I, I don't want to go off again. So, yeah, I would do anything. And I do delicate work. Uh, I mean, everything's dangerous to a certain degree. It's come, it comes to the territory, but... Um, I also don't uh, want to hold us up too much. If you guys want to go off ahead, I can stay here for I mean, a while. It'll probably get... take me about 10, 15 minutes or oh. so. Okay. Can we, can we watch? If you like. Yeah. Will I be awake for it? I don't quite know how I would have you not be awake for it. Can you shut down voluntarily? I don't understand quite how you are, so please tell me if there is a way to do that. Well, I mean, I can I can go into sort of a rest mode. Sure, then we can try that. We'll keep an eye on him, though, so it won't be any like, you know, won't yank your thing while you're sleeping. Yeah, maybe you should stay awake. You know how like when people do brain surgery and they- I don't. I don't either. I just, <laughs> yeah, no, but maybe it, would it makes be. me feel better. I was sitting here thinking it too, going, I can't think of an equivalent that would actually make oh, that. You, sense. Had, you, had, you brain had brain surgery. surgery. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that was, it was a it very be loose a hole in your head. <laughs> I had ventilation. It's not really the same. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Not. I think we yeah, should try I would love keep it. you away. All right, well, but if it gets oh, scary, will you distract me with something? Just, oh, we'll disarm you beforehand. Yeah. You know. No, no, not. I mean, yes, Would of you course. like to grip my hand? Sure. Well, there goes that hand. <laughs> yes, that's true. All right. Mine are yours. Rada, uh, close the door. And you see uh, one of the assistants. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. Your fingers like look like the top saw. of his hair. Right? <laughs> the assistant closes the door and locks it. Uh, I mean, one of the associates, and they're going to like draw the windows closed. And uh, Imahara Joe kind of takes his uh, goggles he has on his forehead and pulls them down. You can see he's like kind of getting them ready. The various intricate kind of multi-distant lenses on him as he begins to kind of adjust a little bit. Pick it up, goes over. Uh, if this is uncomfortable, let me know, but uh, this would be the easiest way to do so. And he begins walking off, and you now, I haven't really noticed it before, but there are these large runners in the ceiling, these like metal uh, kind of chain-based racks that slide up and down across the way, and kind of drags one over, and it kind of makes this like metal rolling sound as it kind of pulls over to the side, another one with these hooks, and kind of draws them up under parts of your ch chest oh, chassis. Oh, does that uh, hurt? No. Can you? Do you feel like pain when things hit your your? I do, and I, I mean, you I, feel pain. Well, I, I think I do. I, I get it's sort of like a a buzzing, you know, red explosion of of something. I, I feel it sometimes when I when I heal you all too. Really? Yeah. Fascinating. Okay. Uh, I'll be gentle and reaches over and grabs a chain and begins to pull on it. As it does, both of the, the chains that are kind of fixed to you kind of pull taut and begin to lift you up off the ground. Mm -hmm. You kind of like rock a little bit as you do and you worry for a moment okay. you're about to spin forward and lose, but it kind of still manages to do hold you upright. Can you do a backflip? Uh -huh. I don't do that. I would highly <laughs> not recommend doing that. Just hold still. I want to. Look, they only go one way. Come on, let's be reasonable. Oh, that's true. <laughs> are you going to try a backflip? <laughs> I might need a boost. No, no, no. Yeah, maybe you should just not listen to me. <laughs> and listen to the do you want, do you want a boost? Yeah, just no, Jesus. No, no. All right, forget it, forget it. <laughs> Explore your core, your soul, and you're doing backflips. Right, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's just I've never flown before. <laughs> <laughs> you were super anti-flying earlier. I can make you fly if you well, want. I, as long as I don't have wings. No. Okay. <laughs> uh, at this point, you can see the other kind of interns or uh, associate workers are kind of curiously getting close as mm. you know, Joe takes his goggles down and takes these two like hooded lanterns that dangle at different points of the ceiling, kind of lowers them uh, onto smaller or lower rungs in the chains and kind of turns them inward to kind of give this nice direct light on you. Um, at which point he reaches into his tool belt and starts kind of like carefully and, and surgically looking around the outer aspects of your chassis um, before eventually finding what looks to be a series of uh, like clips or bolts. You're not entirely certain how it's affixed, but he goes, okay, I think I see, I think I see, and does one little tug, and you watch as the metal uh, section of your torso <laughs> opens oh! up. Oh. You okay? Oh. Do you want to go to sleep? Do you want to go to sleep? I don't know. This feels weird. <laughs> this feels weird. It's just like taking a shirt off. Uh, Are you okay? Are you okay? 
I, th- I think so. I, I think can stop so. anytime. No, nope. I'm gonna look down. You don't have to look. Oh, okay. Oh, no, I see. You look down. I see. Just lose change oh. or. Uh, no, you, just mold the eyes around. Well, no. On on the it's inside, like you see the you, know. you see the exterior <laughs> of what looks to be like a a metal um, vat or like almost like 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 the bottom part of a, a metallic bowl. This would be where whatever you ingest. Comes into sure. Um, you, so you're not looking okay, inside of it. It's still like a solid from this perspective. Yeah. It smells um, like old beer in here. Yeah. <laughs> it does have a unique scent. <laughs> um, yeah, with all the shit that's. Oh, yeah. But uh, but you also see there are a manner of strange, glowing runes that kind of sparkle on the bottom of it, and there are these uh, odd, almost pipe-like protrusions that come out of these different runes and converge. Uh, and kind of move back and behind it. Um, oh, fascinating. Wow. That's okay. Just kind of I, glancing over it. There's, uh, kind of clicks over a different Let lens. I don't know if you start freaking out, all right? No, I mean, it just feels real weird. Do you want me to draw any of this, like take notes so I can sketch <gasps> yeah, the yeah. inside? Yeah, 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 but please do. Awesome. Just make me a copy. I just take my chisel and start digging it into my hands. <laughs> Oh my god, <laughs> what? Oh, she used paper! Nice. I'm fucking with you! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Seems needlessly <laughs> elaborate. There's another copy! Teddy's <laughs> <laughs> uh. printing press! Make it better! Damn it. Get about six copies in before he starts getting a little woozy. Oh. <laughs> Looking at this. Uh, I forgot to sign them. Interesting. There's some sort of a. Like a, uh, a a transmutation enchantment here that is that is it seems to be taking forts inside here and reallocating it. Interesting. What? what why is that interesting? Oh, oh, like what's in the what's in the cavity? Whatever's inside this kind of like ding ding ding. Because oh, like, I eat I eat like metal. metal and stuff, and so it's it's turning it into. <sighs> Whatever I need to repair myself. Wow. Interesting. Transmute what now? Tra- transmutation. Uh, I guess from the same whatever. Fucking. So good. Caleb has a nose bleed. I may have. I may have. Oh, it's a little hard to get in here. Oh. 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 Uh, oh. Do you? Hey. May buy, I, me, buy me dinner first. <laughs> I like, my, may I? May I look beyond this uh, collection? Device. Yes. Go. You have my consent to reach beyond my collection device. <laughs> <laughs> so now, now you're just making it weird. Uh, Imarjo pulls up and kind of like reaches this little latch, and you watch as it kind of hangs open slightly, like, oh. and pulls outward to reveal a little more space behind it. And it's kind of hard to see from your angles, but there's like a very, very faint kind of a. Almost a violet glow that see is now visible on the back side of it, deeper within the chassis of FCG's chest. So, uh, I think there it is. That's the. Uh, Why is it always purple? That's the power core. Does it look like the same sort of purple stone that we've seen before? Uh, I mean, similar shades, but make a perception check. Is it a dark? Actually, violet? make an arcana check. Can I? Uh, can I help her with that? If you'd um, like to, yeah. I don't know, I'll give you a sister. How's your arcana? Is it terrible? Oh, really? I'll, I'll, then I'll, I'll give you. roll as well. Uh, okay. It, it, it's hard to see. Yeah, it, it's definitely not as. Str- oh, I can do it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, bright light. Oh, box, but. Correct, but it's just like a like a dull. That's pretty base good. Glow. That's my arcana. Twenty-one. Show. Twenty-one. Uh, having quite a very familiar. Couple of interactions. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> Get her away from me! Get her away from me! <laughs> um, this does not have the same sort of arcane signature oh. of those stones. All right. Um, but just another purple stone. Yeah. There are there are many things with many different yeah. similar colors in this world. There is only one. Sure. <laughs> only one thing has, looks purple in yeah. the whole world. Did- do 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 do. That was too quick. Whoa! That was way too quick. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> You're not even allowed to say one syllable. <laughs> Relentless. 
I'm gonna <laughs> jump on your ass. <laughs> that was <laughs> sharpshooter. <laughs> <laughs> Quick draw. <laughs> that is the funniest table bullying I've seen in a long time. <laughs> 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 I've not tried this at all. <laughs> Did, um. <laughs> shit. Uh, no. Oh, yeah. Um. <laughs> Did, did, what do the runes say? <laughs> Why do I keep doing that? Did, did we know what the runes are saying? Do we, can we the read them? Say? Do you have a roll arcana for me? What about can, that can I see it or? Oh. I can't, Wait, I can't see it. You can't see it. At this no, point, like like the, the metallic device that would act as your stomach is now dislodged on the on the far side and is now kind of leaning out, almost like it's on a it's on a, a, a slight. Um, I was. I, hinge. Yeah, hinge. Thank you. That's the word. Try your lens. We got it back. Yeah. The green lens. Oh, yeah, that's right. But it's possible it, it is broken, 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 broken forever. That fucker. Could be. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, didn't we try to. We haven't we tried have, to use it since. Since we mended it. Yeah. No, let's try it. It seems like I mean, a time. I know you can read it. I'm going to try to look through it with the lens. Okay. It gives a nice, good green tint oh. to it. Ah, it's a rune. It doesn't necessarily mean that it translates. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Ladna is going to. Attempt to read the runes. Okay. Dave, make an arcana check. Read the runes. Oh, look at you! Read the runes. Read the runes. Kind of um, just whisper in the back of my head. Delilah, what do you God. see? Ooh! CX. Oh. CX. She CX, CX, CX. CX. Nothing of particular interest to me. To you? I don't give a fuck. Give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> I just kind of shake my head. I'm. I'm sorry. It, it's not. I just can't right now. It's okay. This is okay. I, I found it. I, I found the court. And you see, like, pulls into his his pouch of tools and pulls out like these little handheld mirror devices and kind of puts them underneath to reflect, so he doesn't have to like get too intrusive in there. And kind of gets a well, close you know look. I can, while you look at it, I'm just going to cast a spell just to see if it changes or anything. Okay, That's what do you fair. cast? I'll cast guidance. Okay, on Joe. As you cast guidance, you watch as all the runes on the in, and the, you have noticed before, but like on the inside of the chassis, whenever the, the spell begins to form. All of these invisible runes and runic uh, cool. shapes on the inside of the metal all swell with light, and that core swells to the purple color, just blossoms. And Joe kind of pulls back. Did I? No, uh, I, I did it. I did it. I just wanted to see if it would have an effect. Interesting. You, you are filled with magic. Um, it's pretty cool. It's not wrong. It looks neat. Everything looks everything looks good here. Um, that lay tether. The tether is appropriately placed, from what I can tell. To get a closer look, I'd have to do some severely invasive uh, uh, inquiry, and I don't think any of us want to do that, no. just in case. I don't, so. don't think anything that seems out of place. Anything that seems. Is there another stone? Something that's hidden. A missing uh, set, like a setting or that is missing one rock, or has uh -huh. an additional one, or something. Best I can tell, everything is as intended. Letters. What if you try to cast a damaging spell? Oh. All right. <laughs> um, my chassis isn't on, so uh, you know I can't really aim too good, but. Um, Sure, I, I also don't have that many hurting spells, but sure, I'll um, I'll cast spiritual weapon. Oh, that's since, since I can cast that from anywhere. That feels nice, though. Oh, like a nice. Is that too nice? Do you have anything that's like a zap? Do I do a have a zap. Play? Do you need like do you need a, a? Do you need an enemy? Far away or close? I can take this. This is no. You problem. want to? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. Okay. Yeah. I'll then I'll shoot. The sacred flame. Okay. I'll stand to the side so that nothing important gets hit. Okay. Um, it usually comes out of my chest, though, so I don't know what's going to happen. Oh. Ooh, step aside. Okay. Step aside. Step aside. So you cast sacred flame, and as you do, all the interior magical runes all glow once more. But as they do, Watch out, Joe. they uh, 
You watch as all the runes seem to gather the sudden flash of kind of bright energy in the center that then kind of seems to almost blow out like a candle in your direction and vanish. And then where you're standing, flames apparate <laughs> around you for a second and burn for how much? Oh, uh, uh, uh b -b -b I really Fuck him up! Yeah. Top level. Six points of damage. Six well, points of and I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> if we were staring in when that happened, oh, that did we see down. any, yeah, any other things seem to light up? Any stones? Different runes? Yeah. Is anybody else looking? Yeah, 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 just yeah. me? Can I roll? Because I got a 13. I don't know what any of this means. I'll check no, it. I was shit. looking. No, I was looking at Ashton. This is not also real bad. Not no, good. 17. Um, oh, okay. uh, it, you, you don't see like a major difference. Like different runes almost like light up at different times, but there isn't like a change in color. There isn't a, a uniformity. There isn't like all of them always activate as once. There's almost like a almost like a sequence that was different, if anything. But I'm doing my best to sketch these runes, but I don't know what they are, so, you know. It's interpretive. Sure. It's interpretive. <laughs> and in no particular <laughs> order. Can you see where his, uh, you know, his eyes turned red? So I wonder if there's something like, whatever the wire or whatever is connected to the eye. The ocular. Ocular Bits. region. Maybe there's like a a cable or something that attaches to something else. Maybe whatever that's attached to is what makes him turn. Like an LED. Like uh, an LED. So pulls back a little bit. Are you, big old like goggled lenses <laughs> on Joe's face looking up at you. Absolutely. Very much like Rick Moranis and Honey, I Train the Kids. Like, are you okay with me? You're gonna pop off my eyes? Well, sure. I, I look into the cranial Cavity. The dome! He's gonna get in your head! I mean, I trust you all to repair me. Wow. <laughs> so go ahead. Are you sure? Okay. I mean, I feel like. Lowers the stomach. I have to do this. Recess back into the chest, locks it into place, latches it, um, goes ahead and puts everything arranged back where it was supposed to be in the torso, and then closes the chest until it latches, oh. finishes that area oh. there. Takes the chain, lowers you slightly to where you're now, like your head's a little below eye level for Imahara. Uh, and it goes and walks around you now, behind, so you can't actually see. And uh, starts looking at you. Oh god. He's guessing? He had to roll for me. I do not know how to do this. I do not see any sort of seam or entry point, and to be perfectly honest with your torso, that was kind of just a, a standard automaton uh, point of access, but I do not see a means of, I don't want to do any exploratory <laughs> drilling or cutting. That sounds right. That sounds right. Can I look? Just see if there's a little button. At by, by all means. I'll, make an I'll, investigation I'll, check I'll for you. I'll help you. I'll, I'll... I'll give you, what is this? Investigation? It's investigation. Is, is that wisdom or intelligence? It's intelligence. I will enhance uh, ability. Oh, so you get advantage. Oh, I do? Mm. Yeah. Okay. And you can guide her. Sure, I'll guide her too. Okay. And okay. a d4. And then a d4. And a d4. And this was perception? This is investigation. This is investigation, I mean? Where's my deck gum four? Here we go. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, a four. Well, it was a little cops. It, oh, it looked like a four to me. I know it, it looked did. like a was four it? Was the first it? one. It was uh, well, you, you re-rolled it. I re-rolled re it. it. Okay, one. so. Honest right. player. Uh, 14. 14. You don't really see anything. I don't see anything. What if you just like untwist an eye? Sure, try that. Just twist an eye. eye. Untwist an eye. Get in there. Twist an eye. Twist That's an amazing weird. thing oh, to put I, back I together. I trust you. We're like experts. I don't. Okay. Just just, just twist a little. I don't want to do it. You want to do it? I can do it if you want me to. Do it. Okay. What if nobody does it? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Milo did repair one of your eyes when you came in, but the repair was done to the lens. Uh, the actual eye itself was not 
heavily tampered with. Uh, you watch his fern begins to torque the eye a bit, and it becomes very uncomfortable very quickly. Does it hurt? Uh-huh, <laughs> yep, but maybe keep- I can stop. A little bit more? What if you snap your what eyeball? Yeah, maybe that's yeah, not a good that idea, but a good idea. Like, we Precise gotta solve this. Supposed to do. We learned a little. We did. What if I get mad at you or something and I'm like- I know, you know what? I wonder if when we open open up the front, maybe I can make you think of Dancer. Maybe we can look at now, that. Now what are you, well, I'm just curious now that we've kind of done a little bit of this, I'm not entirely certain what you're looking for now. We checked, oh, we, we looked towards the core and the, like the cable and everything was Even right horror there. Joe, it was crazy. He just kind of snapped and his eyes went all red and then he was like, ah, you're all horrible and I hate you and he kind of went on a rampage. Yeah. Hi. Sorry, that was yours to no, no, share. No, probably. no, no. Probably. <laughs> I probably should have let you um, speak. Sorry to hear that. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, the automatons do rarely have a, say, a degradation of the enchantments built within, and there can be. Uh, there can be some unexpected behavior, but those are in very rudimentary automatons, and usually those are through intentional tampering um, or extreme degradation over age. But I mean, looking over you, you're in very, very good condition, uh, regardless of the. Gotta work out. Well, well, good for you. Um, hold on a second. Oh. And he kind of gets up and. Uh, Lowers you from the chains first. You're not like hanging. Uh, Goes and set those off. Oh, that was really good for this. For the yeah, like a, yeah, a, a spinal, spinal column. Spinal you look table. taller. Yeah. Yeah. Look taller. <laughs> and you see, he goes over towards a uh, back room and kind of opens a door and vanishes in the back. He just wall. left. <laughs> you. He just quit the business. <laughs> you drive off. <laughs> 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 The shop is ours now. <laughs> Did you get a good visual on that, this D? That D? Joe's D? Yeah, the, the mask. What if it's Dorian? I should have seen that coming. Right? No, that's, 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 um, that's yeah. I mean, there's no way. I mean, so I didn't cool. get a, Just word. a visual. No, but I, I can always. Questions and yeah, I can always try to, wait, to get a read. You, you know what I was thinking too, Ashton? No, I feel might know something about this D. <gasps> Joanna Hexum. Maybe if we reach out to her, she loves trading and dealing, and she traded automatons and ancient artifacts. What if that's a really good idea? What if she that knows, a, this, right? That's a that's a great idea. Oh come on, you've made up with her. No, that's a that's a really good idea. What? That's not. That's great. That's great. Oh, don't, bro. Oh, don't be like that. Now this time, Joe comes back into the chamber, holding a book, and just kind of like flipping it through. And he sets it down. <laughs> I read something about this. This is kind of might not be anything, but it's interesting. Goes through. Okay. There is something, something called the care and culling. The care and culling? The care and culling. <laughs> May I speak to a manager? <laughs> Burn it all! This ends today! Call the Karens! <laughs> Go ahead and film me, I'm filming care too! And culling. <laughs> <laughs> We are the worst. <laughs> yep. I hate all of this. <laughs> so much. Oh, Nothing word. that ever leaves my whole uh, nope, form is safe. cannot say words. Never. <laughs> um, we ruin everything. It's true. That's. I'm used to it at this point. I'm numb. Um, Don't touch my dog. <laughs> the care and culling. Oh my god, I wrote it care and I culling. Did oh no. <laughs> uh, was an event during the Age of Arcanum where after a series of gifted uh, automatons that were distributed amongst different locations in Exandria, uh, primarily as like, caretakers or as helpful companions, um, 
suddenly just killed their <gasps> uh, the people they were gifted to. And wait, when was this? You said uh, this was this was far pre uh I don't think the dates are specific here. This is cobbled together from scraps of historical notes. Wow, um, rising. Yeah, but uh, but I kind of what I was telling you before. Uh, it seems that all these designs were originally created and then distributed by uh, political figures within the city of Aeor. Oh, and the, as it's put here, targets were of various political competitors. Assassin bots? Oh, you were so, an assassin bot? But wait, uh, I was designed as a, as a helper who was Going to get Order sixty six or snap. whatever, and snap. Is that what it was called? Yep. And they were pro- they horses. were mm-hmm. created and distributed by who again? Did you say political figures? Political figures Jesus. within Aeor, and were meant uh, primarily as some sort of a um, a peace offering, or uh, a, a reaching for some sort of collaboration. Um, not all of it worked, many of them survived, and at that point, a number of lines were drawn, and it looks like the distribution of any sort of gifted arcana outside of Aeor was uh, considered <laughs> historically moot, which is why it's so rare to find any of their tech outside of you know whatever ruins come out of the north side of Wildmount these days. Most everything else that's been cobbled together was found in other civilizations that had interactions beforehand, and this was apparently one of the moments that kind of brought that to an end. So you could have been gifted by someone out of Aeor, ended up in the Rumidon Desert, or whatever city was around there. I wonder who your target was. Felder. This is terrible. Oh, this is great, that means you are actually older than me. Yeah. You don't want to be the oldest? I thought that was a point of pride with well, you. I mean, that was like a thousand years ago. I mean, I can't compete with that shit. I'll try. Does it say? Does it say how, what was supposed to set them off? Or? Yeah, what the trigger was. Yeah. No, I mean, that these are, kind of like shows you the book, and uh, as he goes through, it's a bunch of like summaries of verbal tales or scraps of historical information from that era um, with additional like notes from different researchers kind of doing their take on it or their interpretation of this. Um, this is, it, it, there's nothing specific about it beyond just the acknowledgement of the event, historically. Um, but this book in particular deals with kind of uh, the the loose history of a lot of the technology that I myself focus on, which is why I kind of caught my attention when you mentioned this change of behavior. Uh, oh man, we gotta go and see what's out there. Yeah. Maybe your old home is out there. Wow. Maybe we gotta go to Aeor. Where the fuck Here is it's Aeor? Cold. <laughs> Level seven. Let's go. <laughs> At this point, he kind of you see Joe kind of closes the book and gives you a look, and his face kind of turns a little sad. And he sets it on the side and goes, <clears throat> kind of kneels down a little bit to get eye to eye with you. Look, I. I don't mean to tell you this to to bring discomfort. Um, what I can say is, you are unique. I've seen many, many different, I mean, people, let alone, uh, you know, beings of your persuasion, but nothing quite like you. And I've spent a lifetime building, changing, improving all sorts of creations. Um, And what I can say is that improvement is something that I've always strived for. And not something that you were above. Then you're a very nice man. Look, whatever this says and whatever has happened, you know, that's maybe part of the nature that you were created for, but I mean, what is life if not finding ways to buck the supposed reasons for a creation and carving its own path? I hope you're right, but. I'm not alive. <laughs> you keep saying that, apparently, but I, what I can say... I mean, I was created. 
So I was wasn't I. created to help. I was created to kill. What if you were created to help and then somebody put in a secondary program or something? You know what I mean? It's just like an additional little bit. It sounds like I was made to look like I was helping. I'm gonna tell you something to trick right people. <laughs> There's an awful lot of people in this town, in this world, who may have also been created for violent purposes. A lot of wars have been fought with soldiers, born and bred. Is that any different than you? When the war was over, you know what a lot of those soldiers did? The ones that survived? Started a family, started a business. Just because you're made for a purpose doesn't mean it defines you. And you know, some people go their, their whole lives without a purpose and, and you had one to kill people, but that was, sure. you know, it's, you, you had it. I had a goal. That's just not helping. And maybe, maybe that's you, but that's ancient history. Yeah. Right maybe right. some of it's true. Maybe, maybe none, none of it's of true. It's fucking true. Yeah. This is just a hunch. Or maybe it's hardwired in. Do you want me to maybe. Keep in your eye off? Mm. Or you want to leave it alone? Light you off. Maybe not. That was okay. an interesting detail. It was. Just a little slide in the end. But I mean, watch okay. yourself when you sleep, because you know from now she's gonna try. Yeah, she's trying yeah, to steal my eye. Yeah. Letters. Idea. What? Um, I'm gonna hold up the lens in front of your eye. Do you see anything? Um, looks looks a little, little no. A little green. Nothing <laughs> special. Everything looks a little green. <laughs> You take it off. Dang, no, oh, it's the whole out. room looks it. a little more orange now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You said it hurts. You said it hurts when you heal us. Yeah. Like it caused you pain. Uh, sometimes, yeah. Like a red explosion was how you described oh, it. It's a jolt of something. I mean, I don't know what pain feels like to you, but it feels like a, a hot bolt of. Something. That sounds about right. And you don't remember anything from when you flipped out and went all buzzsaw? No red hot explosion? Uh, I don't remember anything while I was I was killing, but maybe right before it? I'm only wondering if before we get you down, if we maybe just sure. open up your game one more time and give you a smack. You know, like everything glowed when you cast a spell. That's sure. cool. I have to see his pain receptors. Yeah, what happens if it's, you know, not healing positive stuff? Okay, I'm down to try it. Well, we don't know who you were. I think we want to know more. I'm sure you do, but what I care about is who you want to be now. I gotta figure that out, I guess. Don't you know? No, I just found out about all this stuff. I don't mean uncovering all the secrets, Letters. I mean, who do you want to be today? Killer? No. Or a healer? Yeah. I know how much you love healing. I yeah. do. I know. I lie. I always prepare those spells. Yeah. Because it's, it's nothing better. It's just the best. Man and Claire heals. That's right. <laughs> Helping people is its own reward. Yep. Mm-hmm. Joe. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, oh, we can open the windows, by the way. <laughs> do you have or know how to do some type of programming for taste? What I mean is, <laughs> he's tried, never yeah. tried yeah. food or <laughs> alcohol or you know, a, a delicious meat pie, or what if? Don't give him a taste of meat. If I had I some sort of a no a taste receptor. Yeah, like a. Is there in something my mouth. to install to yeah, give him? It was a little that? moist, so that the food would make good contact. A little flap, like a little tasting flap. Like perhaps a little porous or bumpy. You know. <laughs> This arcana is a little beyond me. <laughs> <laughs> Coward! 
<laughs> something to think about in the future because it certainly seems like there's some that are very. I'll keep evolved. an eye out if something comes through. That seems an odd request. Okay. Um, Tasticles. <laughs> Actually, can you open your mouth, FCG, as wide as you can? Uh, Do you think there's a way to get into the cranium through mm. through the mouth? Goes ahead and takes one of the hooded lanterns and kind of puts it up inside. Oh, it looks like it's solid. There's not much of a hinge or a... Well, I mean, I could look, but... I... It's invasive. It's in his head. We got other stuff to do. All right. I know, but... Um, we're probably going to a place that has universities where they study this that's stuff. That's true. Joe, Maybe. are there any more... Uh, can you remember anything more about this D character? Mm -hmm. What was... What was D's uh, uh, elbow nuts. image in? What was D's <laughs> nuts? <laughs> uh, Just keeps coming. Did he Just keeps coming. Did he have any accent? Did he have an accent? Deep voice, mid range. Uh, I mean, deepish voice, from what I can recall. It's kind of really masculine. Mark, Mark, I'm gonna attention. wait, wait. I'm yeah, gonna. Okay. There we go. Oh well. Okay. I guess I'm gonna ask your permission because this could be a bit invasive, but. If I could get a read on what he actually looked like, it would help us out tremendously. Sure, yeah, you can do that. All right, so I'm gonna cast Detect Thoughts and try to just shimmy on into his brain and, and just get a good, solid look at that so D. you're pushing? At D. Okay. Yeah. It fails the resistance, and you do see like him kind of like. Sorry about that. Ooh, oh, that's. Think of D. Uh, Concentrates, and you do see this image of like a late afternoon of a you know a dust storm having just finished blowing through, and you see this kind of cloak flapping, kind of somewhat tattered at the edges in the breeze. You see a large heavy hood and a cart being brought along um, by what looks to be some sort of a, a metallic version of a crawler. That's just kind of the the back half, the legs, but it's like a thick beast that's pulling forward, like an automaton beast of burden. And as the cart comes by, you can see there's like piled up, uh, like a tarp is clasped over and kind of flapping against the ropes that keep it tethered down. You can see bits of metal poking out. And you just see D kind of walking forward before tapping the outside of this beast to stop and glancing over and kind of giving a bow. And yeah, you see this like kind of metallic mask that's worn that covers the face. Um, like intricately made bits of, of metal, like almost like, like a Doctor Doom sort of yeah, you know exactly. look to it. Um, and just kind of gives a bow. Can you see his great. eyes, like his his actual can, eyes through the mask? Uh, you can see that that from from Joe's perspective. Joe never got terribly close. It was very much kind of like a, and you watch as Joe begins to kind of puts a hand out like that's enough. Mm -hmm. And then begins to remove the tarp and begins to lay out these various findings within the cart. And there are pieces of machinery, there are parts of arcane weapons. A lot of it looks heavily damaged and destroyed. Things and remnants of uh, ancient days past and wars long fought and buried. Um, but yeah, you as they lay them out, they take a step back and kind of reveal, and then. Joe comes up and inspects a few, points out the ones that he wants, talks with them, uh, whistles out loudly to one of his assistants to come out with a chest, counts out some money, and then kind of tosses it out across the way. This is like distance that's being kept that this D figure is maintaining. Um, and then once the amount is satisfactory, goes ahead and takes the unchosen bits, loads them back up in the cart, gives another bow, slaps the side of this odd, like, headless, just series of, now as it gets close, you can see it's like four legs, but they kind of operate on this outside kind of weird side elbow feel, and they just kind of pull it forward across the dust, and the car begins to move past as D crosses and continues into the rest of the town. And what do D's feet look like? I know this is random, can I get a, a look? The leather boots. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Uh, I don't want to feel that again. That was weird. It's like a, like a cold. You know, you drink something really cold really fast and it kind of like hurts a little bit. It's yes. like that. 
Uh, put your tongue on the roof of your mouth. Mm. It helps a little bit. Not helping. Thank you. Uh, anyway, is there anything else I can do to help? No, we're good. Thank we're you good. so much, Joe. Okay. Okay. We well. It. Good luck. If you need anything else, any repairs or anything. Uh, fresh cut grass, right? That's me. And before you go, uh, turns around and heads back into the back room and returns like something in his hand. I don't know if this is something that'll help. I can see you look a bit more less. And uh, in times where I felt a little lost, I had something that helped me. Um, maybe this will help you find the right path. And puts a looks like a, like a coin or a medallion in your hand, and you look at it, and it has this profile of a woman's face, hair kind of flowing and swirling into the boundaries. This is a it's the token of the change bringer. Change bringer. One of the many gods that looks down upon us and protects those who wander free, keep roads open, and guide those who are lost on the paths beyond. She's been a she's been a source of inspiration for me for quite some time. And if you ever feel lost, maybe she'll help you too. Thank you, Joe. I, uh, I won't eat this one. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> um, I think we'll see you again. I hope so. But right now, uh, we gotta get across town. Yeah. All right, Thank well. Thank you. Does well, anyone have any like, money to, to? Oh, you've already, we've done quite a bit of business and to be perfectly honest, just the the chance to uh, to inspect a piece of history like you has been the gift in its own right. Uh, so thank you. I've learned quite a bit, even just our short time together. In fact, I may reiterate some of my designs. So uh, thank you. You're welcome. All right. Stay safe out there. Bye. Town's full of characters. Thanks, Joe. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Chatney will catch up, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let him sleep. <clears throat> <laughs> so I'm huffing paint in the back. <laughs> he just, <laughs> he's just he's sta he fell asleep standing up too. It's so wild that he can do that. Like a <laughs> As you step out into the hot midday sun of the town of Basaris, a series of answers, possibly, or further mysteries around your recently dangerous and also conflicted friend. We're going to take a break. Whoa! Yeah, so we're at that point, and we should do that. Boy, I gotta pee. Boy, um, boy. And uh, deal with Chetney's immediate aneurysm that killed his character. It's oh, really sad. Oh, it's so unfortunate. Sad. We knew it was coming. We did. Yeah. No. Anyway, uh, we'll be back here in a few minutes, and we'll pick it from there. See you in a minute. Laura Bailey here to guide you through what's new in the Critical Role Shop. The cuteness, it's overpowering. Can you put donuts in this? Only one way to find out. Look at this, isn't it fashion? So much fashion happening here. Oh my gosh, it's so amazing. Style should never be a dumpster, darling. And hey, if you want, you could head over to the Critical Role shop right now. 
Maybe that's the lesson of this episode of Foresighted Dive is that life is meaningless is and, and free will doesn't exist because we're just a series of inputs and outputs. Life needs yeah. things to live, but we're not actually living. Yes. Yeah. We're wow. dying. Is, is so. That's the promotional clip. Before, <laughs> <laughs> <by> the <way. laughs> I said, what's the deal with the name Ira? And he said, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> this game does not suck. You're the one who sucks. <laughs> Good buddy. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, wow. oh, it says keep laughing. <laughs> keep laughing. <laughs> if someone just tuned in, they must think we're so high right now. <laughs> <laughs>it's me. Marisha Ray. I had exactly a minute and a half of free time today, so I thought I'd make a little unboxing video for y'all, unpacking everything you get with a Twitch subscription to Critical Role. Okay. Safety third. <laughs> the fuck was that? Oh. So the first thing we've got here is our live and professionally moderated chat. Uh, Twitch is the only place that you can actually get this. You know, it's a little strange to hold because it's an amorphous concept, but um, honestly, you can't deny this craftsmanship. It's really well made and, oh, oh, you can post links in this too. That's really cool. So yeah, put that in your chat and click it. Oh, yeah, this is cool. This is the ability to watch all of Critical Role's VODs immediately after the live broadcast ends and before they're uploaded to YouTube. Oh, it smells like ranch? Oh, wait. Oh, no, that's that's me. <laughs> I had ranch on my salad earlier. Yeah, this smells like nothing. Oh, oh. Here we have... <laughs> gift subscriptions, which you can... Uh, Either give to a fellow critter by name or at random using a fancy Twitch algorithm. You can give away a lot of subs with this, which um, I guess it's why it's so heavy for something that's technically non-tangible with a value that's deeply subjective to the consumer. Oh, sick. Yeah, I'm so excited to show you all this part. With the Twitch subscription to Critical Role, you can use all of our incredible custom emotes in chat. We have so many emotes in here. Let's see, we have... Uh, Oh, Art Dad, super cool. Yeah, we got Ashley Hype, fun one. Oh, look at Trinket here, he's so like, oh, oh God, oh God. Uh, 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 Broom, Broom, hang on, I can fix this. I can fix this, I'm fixing it, Jerry! Oh God, okay, I'm sorry Trinket. Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> I need more glue, this is not gonna be enough. Don't tell Rachel, okay? Okay, please, nobody. Uh, Shakira, will you cut this, this all this out?
<laughs> and welcome back. So, picking back up as you exit Imara Joe's back into the city of Basaras to find your next location of fortune, what are you doing? Oh God! Oh my God! We're going to we're going to Paragon's call unless anyone has. Well, they're whispering about stuff, but we're going to Paragon's call, right? Unless anyone yeah, else has anything else to do. Uh, I think that's where we're at. Should, uh, should, uh, should we be concerned about um, if Odahan sees you? Well, you've seen her in your dreams, but she hasn't seen you. And I'm pretty sure she's aware of who she is. She's in my dreams. How do you know that? I guess I don't. It just feels that way. Do you talk to her in your dreams? I have. Oh. Hmm. What's what is said? Um So far she just said interesting and kind of lunged at me. Oh. And then I woke up feeling like she'd maybe <clears throat> killed me. Yeah, I don't like that. Yeah, it's not a good it's indicator. Not that I was no. expecting. Perhaps we should just maybe try and keep you a bit more concealed. I, I, I mean, I, I'm. I can do that. Sure. Or we don't worry about it because she wouldn't want to fuck with Bell's Hells. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, look, yeah. we gotta have a little confidence in our identity sure. if we're gonna pull this off. I do get the impression that she uh. maybe controls a large force of very strong fighters. And so maybe she wouldn't be too intimidated by us. Not just Paragon's call, you mean. Exactly. That. Can we talk out what we are about to do? <laughs> hmm. A little bit. Yeah. Probably. Step one. Sure. Walk through the door. Knock on the door. Oh, You're right. knock. Yeah. oh damn it! I'm yeah. fucking it up already. Just slow it down. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. See the plan. Okay. Start over. Step one. Knock on the door. Very good. All right. Step two. Announce ourselves. Very nice, yeah. Ashton. Yes. Oh, ha okay. Knock. I almost had it. Step three. Ask to see our accommodations. Huh? I was gonna say pass through the threshold, but I guess we could just. I mean, I feel like we can. You don't have to get so granular with Well, you did. Fuck. Fuck. Okay, look. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, do you, uh, how are we gonna so keep you low key? Even at the gate? I don't know. Well, maybe we just meet this thing head on. Yeah. What? Yeah. I'm not, not in a challenging way, but I mean, like, you know. Head on. Maybe you call. Maybe you call it out. Apply directly to the forehead. Well, no, but a few times you've done magic that have turned you purple and lost your hair. Maybe you could do something like that and change your appearance again while we'll go in there. Like <coughs> turn yourself purple again, or whatever. Uh, you I were. mean, I'd, I'd, or we could shave your head. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I mean, I could try to do some sort of spell that would. Mm -hmm. it, it, cause the stone to flare up and maybe it would do something. We could try. Sure. I'm all for stone flares. I all right. suppose. I'm gonna just... Just yeah, fuck that's... with wild magic, just cause. Mm -hmm. so what, yeah. What's there for? You fuck with wild magic? I am going fuck with to... The... Yeah, fuck with wild magic. <laughs> fuck with wild magic? <laughs> Yeah. Twin spell. <laughs> I go to the frozen north. Twin spell catapult at first level. What are you gonna fling? I'm just gonna pick up a couple rocks and fling them in opposite directions as we're walking. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> um, and that will they. set off the. Uh, like fire off you, you hear the the faint ripple of the air being broken through at a massive speed as the rocks just vanish from view. Um, go ahead and roll a d100 for me. Ah! Someone is dead five yeah. blocks over. Yep, drop a penny off the Empire State yeah. Building. <laughs> no, I'm gonna do this one. 
Oh wait, I can't. That's not. I can't do it like that. No, no, yeah. Two, no, 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 no. I believe in your lore. Thank you. Hold on, I gotta find ten. Oh my god! Shut up! Gotta find the right D ten. That's not the right one. And she's got to search for it in the smallest rolling area ever. I don't know how to read <laughs> this because I'm not sure what's, what I What's did. the double digit one? Why'd you oh, you know what? I only holders. did a single. I did both singles. Hold on, hold on, hold oh on. Oh my god. Okay, now I'm going to do it. Single and a double. Okay. you got to pick okay. which one's hundreds of... 45. Isn't that what I got before? No. No. We hope. Both rocks. <laughs> and your feet lift off the ground. Oh. And you're just kind of hovering there. Oh shit. As if you had cast a levitate spell on yourself. Okay. Do I look different? Yes, you do. You, you look taller. taller. <laughs> 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 this will work perfectly. Yeah. Low key this will is definitely do we have not a robe? draw any attention. We can just we, we can have just, robes. Yeah, we have things. Maybe we could just throw a robe on you and little, then they won't play, see that your feet around. aren't hitting mm -hmm. the ground. Mm -hmm. There's a part of me that thinks maybe if I she am really the traitor. <laughs> 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 If she really is visiting you in your dreams, she probably n knows you. It can like sense you. Uh huh. Prob probably. If that's what's happening. You know, Fern, we haven't really had a moment to unpack this whole you being Rudus born thing. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's right. Do you have dreams? Like you mentioned? I have, sure. I have very, a lot of dreams, but nothing to do with. The moon. Hmm. Do you ever dream about the future? I say floating next to you. All the time. Wait, levitate. Do you have to stay in one place? Yeah, with correct. It? You can go up and down. Okay, but hold my can, hand and just drag me. Okay. Yeah. okay. Dynasty. Okay. Yeah, you're, you're, you're a balloon, essentially. Okay. Balloon. <laughs> balloon. <laughs> Inception. <laughs> I don't have dreams like you, but I. I don't know. I, 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 that's not something that I felt in my bones, that I was probably Rudus born, but, you know, maybe that's not something that you just know right away, obviously. Hmm. The bones tell me nothing. The bones. <laughs> they don't. All so. right, well. I don't know. I guess we should start with step one and go knock on the door. Knock on the door is a solid start. I think, right. I think. Oh, hold on. I look, or if it looks like he's got <coughs> concerns. We were going to get a hideout. We were? We were. To oh, yeah, to stash. To, to, to lay low with Trushy. We don't have that. We, yeah. have a, we have a vehicle, though. Okay. And you know what? Joe Lax has a whole lot. Exactly. So we kind of have a hideout. And we have the oh, Callaway castaway. I mean, we that is a, a hideout. definite hideout. That's out of town. Yeah. Oh, but it's so we close. We can go there. It's, it took us quite a while to get there. A couple like an hours. Hour. It took longer because we fought that giant thing. It's not a big deal. Okay. And honestly, getting out of town is probably better. We'll see them coming. So we can cut the bridge after we cross it. Oh, mm. strand ourselves. No, I mean, hide out. We have an airship. Do we want to? <laughs> do true. we want to try and take care of that before we? No. Hell no. Take care of what? But a hideaway. Finding a hideout real Finding quick. Finding a yeah. slightly yeah. narrow yeah. hideaway. We got one. We're good. Hideout. And we have a hole that people can breathe in for nine minutes and fifty-nine seconds. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. and we just open it back up whenever we need to get him to the castaway, Callaway castaway. Hideaway. What are we calling? Yeah, that's I can, I can think like of the late cast, cast so late. many ways that could possibly go wrong, but I'm still into so it. So we sort of have a hideout. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And we have you, yep. floating. Floating. Should I put like a recognizable mascarpha to the person we're going to see? I mean, that's Maybe. my question. Do you want to be recognizable or do you want to be unrecognizable? How long do y'all think I'm gonna float? I don't know. What if I float forever? I mean, so your other things lasted for a day. So maybe I'll just float for a second. <laughs> I think at the very least you're going to float till it isn't funny anymore. <laughs> this is the best. This is going to be interesting. How are you going to sleep? <laughs> Honestly, maybe probably really thing. comfortably. Just, just relax. Just what happens if you just, just relax? Foot. Go limp. <laughs> let go of me. Let what go. Happened? Let go of me. Do I just keep floating up or am I <laughs> staying still? No, I mean, you're. 
You're still floating wherever you were. But I'm not moving. I'm going to yeah, try to turn up. her sideways. Okay, she goes sideways. Just for a spin and see what yeah. happens. Oh! Here's a hypothetical. Imogen just. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Too fast, too fast. Here's a hypothetical. Shit goes sideways. We gotta run. Telekinetic shot. We gotta run. What do you do? Can you run? Nope. We can drag her. Yeah. I'll hit. I'll hitch myself to her and and speed away. We can tie her to the back of the crawler. I am very fast. She can be like a a little flag. Can't you go up? Yeah. How high? Um, I just keep going up. You keep going up. Are we in the middle of the thoroughfare? Hey, hey, don't draw so much attention to yourself. Get the fuck back down here. (laughs) Teleconnect shot. (laughs) (laughs) Come back down. (laughs) We're fine. It's fine. Let's just. You know, I feel like we just need to um, um, fly by the seat of our. Yeah, come on. We gotta gotta make some. Yeah, we gotta do something. And you know what? Absolutely, Orem says as he thinks about the totally viable plan Imogen thought about 37 days we have, ago. We have a hideout! Well, and, and also that plan kind of went away because someone used our bead of capturing bubble thing and it broke. There's been yeah, a lot of broken Sometimes rocks. I do stupid shit. What do you <laughs> <fucking> want? <laughs> So. He's talking about the thing that I broke. Oh, you broke something? Yeah, he I broke something. everything I touched. I just, just assumed that I broke it. That's fucking crazy. I'm broken inside. God, we I feel like I did that too. Well. What? No, 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 yeah. no, no. That was yeah. really, it was not. so intense. But really, that was, We're that gonna was pretty solid. We're going to figure out what this is. You're not broken. I'm killing machine. All right, let's go. Yeah. Your is yours. Let's He's do it. He's starting to believe. <laughs> <Here you go. laughs> Like weaponizing someone's damage. <laughs> Become the Neo you were meant to be. <laughs> My Horrible eyes person. didn't turn red. They've just been blue too long. <laughs> oh, Their no. natural shade is Orem. <laughs> as you are all walking in the direction of the Seat of Disdain, just walking past individuals in the street, and you, you generally keep a very watchful, keen eye of anyone in your vicinity. Mm-hmm. Uh, one person that's kind of walking <gasps> down the road on the outskirts, about maybe a block away, kind of keeping an eye over in the direction of the wall and looks back, doesn't even notice you, but just walks past you. A familiar uh, female Unia, uh, orc elf hybrid, thin, dark leather clad uh, physique, Cloak, hood, heavy belt, many pouches. Um, you recognize this to be Artanovo. Artanovo. The bounty hunter that shot you yes, briefly with a crossbow, with a crossbow while you were looking for Gurge. Oh earlier. my gosh. We, we snuck into that. We snuck into her. Yeah, yeah, room. yeah. Well, how did. We oh, don't that's know right. much about Artana other than they're a badass. Their sister ran the. Tavern or pub that they were laying Correct. in. Correct. Yeah. Oh. Oh. oh she was yes. The... Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. is she doing here? Artanovo. But she has a Merc who was hired to get Gurge just Gurge. enough for the money. If yes. I'm remembering correctly. Oh wow. And they're about a block away. Uh, yeah. They, well, they just like kind of walked past. You no, get, no. You gauge them kind of looking back at the uh, the wall around the seat of disdain, and they keep walking. So They're Prey Omidali, sister. Um, nice notes, Laura. Nice notes. Thanks. Yeah. I'm uh, not going to say anything. I'm just going to slip away and follow. We did. At a distance. Did okay. Artana see us? Didn't seem to, at the moment, pay much attention. Arms on the hut. Uh, all I, I didn't even tell anyone. I tapped uh, Fern's uh, knee and said, uh, I'll be right back. Okay. Okay. You kind of follow at a distance, and you watch Artana kind of duck into the side of two buildings and essentially kind of like separate off from the rest of the main street. And you glance over and see them almost like blocking around. Do you continue to follow? Uh, 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 sorry, didn't follow the visual. So we're You're walking not... down the main road. They yeah. begin to pass by. Yeah. You turn around and watch, and after a short walk, you see them duck off the main road into. A, uh, essentially like an alley between two buildings that kind of 
parallels the exterior perimeter of the wall. Um, yeah, but I will crouch down even lower than my three foot three height and uh, okay. creep along. Make a stealth check for me. Okay. That's not bad. Uh, that is a 19. 19, okay. Um, you continue forward, uh, watching Artana step down the alley, and then she stops. Just kind of stands there. Hey. Sorry. Looks back over the shoulder. I'm not sure if you remember me. I remember. I'm just sorry, right? Yeah. Can I help you? I really was just struck by the fact that I'm seeing you here. What brings you to town? I'm just visiting an old friend. Inside Jack, she's lying to me, but... Uh... uh 17. 17? Yeah. Uh... I mean... She's pretty clear in what she's saying, but you get just enough of a sense based on all the context around that it's probably probably more to it than that, if it's even true. DM, help me remember in the past, because I do not have a great memory. Mm -hmm. Artanovo is after Gurge. Correct. Gurge was got for, ultimately for Treshi, right? Because Treshi had his underling. Correct. Who had Gurge and Wendigoth down below underneath the tower. Yes. So she had been hired by Treshi. Hired by, or, or Treshi's underling. So she could have been hired by either Treshi himself or Treshi's elf lordling. Mm -hmm. Folly de Trano? Yeah, that's the one. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, Doing great. Okay, well, no beef. Um, really, was just bumped by the coincidence. Yeah. Yeah. Stay safe. Okay. She just keeps walking. I hightail it back to the group. What's it for? Okay. That's why she's not working for Trushy still. She is. I come back and just spill all that. I I, I don't know if, if she's still working for Trushy or just the highest bidder right now, but I feel like we should say to say it move now. Yeah. Because I don't know what that means, her on the game board. Hmm. Yeah. Let's get in there. Yeah, we might not be the only ones sent to get Trushy also. Mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. or or no. someone is sent to get us. Yeah. One or the other. She didn't seem like she could have maybe gone also, for me then and there. One person against the seven of us is a little ballsy. Maybe she has nothing to do with us. Yeah, maybe. Maybe she's meeting up with more. Or she's Paragon's just calls. an informant, to your point, more of a spy. We're not that quiet. I mean, all things considered. No. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what else to do other than make noise. Stepping closer to the outskirts, now like early afternoon here in Bas Basaris, uh, you come to the familiar double large gates, the, the doors that lead into the inner courtyard of the perimeter wall, the Seed of Disdain. As you kind of approach, you can see at the top, kind of glancing over the side, there's a couple of armored Paragon's call figures with crossbows that just kind of like keep an eye as you approach. By the way, your levitate drops. Oh, oh I'm levitating. 10 minutes. <laughs> About 10 minutes. I'm yeah. levitating. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, well, last call for somebody to have any common sense. Going once. I'm going putting twice. my hood up and just kind of. I'm going to knock on the door. Step one! Boom, 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 boom. Person looks further <laughs> over. According to plan. Very good. Wait, where is our. Who is this? What do you want? Where's what? We left it at Joe's. Okay. We're Bell's Hells. We were um, Maybe here we to it. see Ritanish. So, you know, just let us in. Leans back please. before you even finish. Hello? <laughs> the doors oh, begin to open up just wide enough to allow one person at a time. 
<laughs> Drop the motherfucking gate. <laughs> <laughs> but you go ahead and look past the Eating the gap entrance. between the doors now. Let the gate drop. I'm gonna murder all of you. Uh, I don't yeah. know, fair enough. And where reviewing... are our accommodations? Are our step three. <laughs> you skipped step two. Yeah. It's okay. Step 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 no, we already he announced ourselves. Step 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 yeah, we're coming in. Hi. Hi. Stepping into the courtyard, um, you can see there are a number of Paragon's Call figures in the center here. And like, you know, the familiar courtyard space that some of you have seen, at least. Um, you see there's like a uh, defunct or an op currently not being operated rune crawler in the corner near the wall where the doors are. There's uh, looks to be a, a tent set up. Um, it looks like there's a mammoth crawler on the opposite side, and there's a large section of boxes and crates that are currently like being checked and loaded onto this mammoth crawler. There's workers loading them? There are Paragon's call members. Yeah, can I read it, their lips? What are they saying? At uh, the moment, they're not communicating anything. There's just like one person going through and checking things. Right. Other folks are just kind of like lifting them for damage and then putting them up onto the side. Um, As we move forward here, I will keep dipping back in that direction to see if I catch any snippets of anything. Okay. Same crawler we saw Odohan on? Yes. Um, and then, uh, and beyond the way, there's like a small uh, fire pit, a little section of rock, and you can see all manner of just materials, um, barricades, uh, so some trained dummies in the far end, uh, and the actual stronghold of the Seat of Disdain looms before you. Um, as you kind of walk through, the, uh, the guard that was on the top of the wall comes back down and is kind of stepping up beside your group. Uh, words got around that Hani should be here shortly. Just, uh, I guess, hang tight. Any particular place, or just stand here in the middle of the court like a bunch of assholes? <clears throat> like a bunch of assholes, please. All right. Um, <clears throat> heads back up onto the rampart. A few moments pass, and then eventually you see a few figures, one of which is Rutanish. Emerging from the stronghold, uh, arms out, kind of like. <laughs> well, it is good to see. You. I'm glad you finally came around. We had a little bit of business to take care of. It well, it took the time it was going to take, and uh, so we're in town for a little while. We figure make a, uh, we can make a little bit of money while we're here. See if you need anything. Indeed. Well, I will say very much your performance in the uh, Death Wish made me uh, quite a bit of gold. I appreciate the. Uh, perf Fantastic display of uh, recklessness. Oh, thank you. Quite delightful. <laughs> Universal. Um, so this is your crew, right? They I recognize some of you from the race, yes. I hope uh, no one else from the call was mortally wounded in the race. Nothing that couldn't be corrected. We are very used to uh, people getting very messed up in the, uh, <laughs> the race. In fact, some of them kind of rely on it. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm keeping an eye out for uh, Odahan or or the old Make guy. Lewd, lewdness. Lewdness tower. Sure. The Martin. Yeah. Oh, a perception check. I'm so good at perceiving. Cocked. <laughs> perceiving. Hey. Wait. Twenty. Oh. Not too bad. Glancing about here, you see that there doesn't seem to. be be a figure that resembles Odahan visible in your current prefer. You do catch the 20 perception. Uh, the wind's picking up a little bit, and you can see a little bit of cloud cover starting to push in just from that faint bit. You see like the banners and stuff from the top line <laughs> flickering loudly. You can hear the sound of it kind of moving and tearing against the wind. There's probably, probably going to be some sort of a, a brief dust storm to come through here shortly. We have. Uh... We have goggles and stuff from the race, right? Yeah, you got something. Okay. Sure, I'm gonna put mine down. Yeah. Wrap my scarf around my face. <laughs> okay. Prepare for it. Well, regardless, I'm glad you made it. We are excited to have you uh, to be helping with us. Um, uh, it is fortuitous timing. We are doing a very uh, large uh, shipment uh, of the city very soon, and we need people to keep watch while we're away. So well, it's perfect. We've got uh, we've got some time to kill. We're not really. We were planning on. Spending a bit of time in the city anyway, and this is a good way to you know, fill our fill our pockets while we're here. Perfect. It's low stakes, uh, primarily, you know, for the first time us working together. I just want to make sure that you're reliable, and uh, 
Uh, it's not entirely uncommon for us to have individuals uh, trying to break in. Um, so uh, just keeping an eye out for you know, I'm reprobates. A, I'm a big fan of low responsibility, high violence poss uh, possibilities. Well, you've come to the right place, my friend. Okay. <laughs> so, um, uh, we've had spoken before, I cannot remember names. It doesn't matter, I don't care. Um, Let's get you situated. Uh, we have set aside the room board for all of you to um, oh, be able nice. to rest for a bit. Excellent. I was going to ask. If um, we should stay offside or not? No, it is, we have places in the barracks below. Nice. Also, if anyone requires any sort of a um, weaponry, armor up, you know, things that uh, I'd like a uniform. Well, we can, after some time, uh, give you a, a means of uniform. Yes, we can do that. That just helps me get into the, the role, the job, you know, immerse myself. All right. Well, we do have yellow clocks, and um, we can get those to you. Um, come with me. Mm -hmm. And he turns around, and his uh, kind of flanking, uh, you can't tell if they're bodyguards or protectors, but you do recognize them as some of the figures that were at the ball as well. Uh, they're walking around with him. Uh, they continue to pass beside him. You see that one of them uh, looks to be uh, a human, and the other is a half-orc. Uh, and you see a third waiting at the stronghold is a uh, little gnome that kind of meets up with you. So it's like a group of four all together with Rutanish, and they seem to be kind of his accompanying bodyguards. They're they like flanking us? Uh, they're uh, not flanking you guys, but they're definitely like keeping around his flank. Okay. Just in case anybody gets too close. And as you walk past, you can see other figures sort of looking out. A couple of people recognize you as you walk through the area and kind of catch them, even like, ha ha! Hey! Yeah. Like a lot of people kind of like whispering, you know, excited to have new blood. Uh, and of course, you you made quite a display in the middle of town not too long ago. So you are if they, you're in that brief window of local celebrity hasn't quite worn off yet. Um, but uh, while fresh to you, uh, the and familiar to you, Fern, as your uh, your furry incursion into this place once before. Furry incursion. Um, indeed, furry incursion. Uh, you enter the Duck. interior of the low lit stronghold oh. itself on the base floor. We're doing it. We're in. Uh, here, these fortified walls and halls kind of bend to the right and left immediately after you go through the front doors. And it curves down these long stretches of stone hallway, with a number of doors off to the side. Um, you kind of bank around and down past a few doors, around again, and to the left. This is on the opposite end of the front door. You can see there's like a war room that enters. Uh, there's stairs that lead up to a large advanced platform where there is a long table with chairs around it. Looks like there are banners hanging in it. There are boxes and crates around. There uh, looks to be some sort of sketching implements and a large map on the wall, uh, the hell catch. Um, continuing past that into the next hallway to the right and down, there is a door on the left that Ratanish opens and turns back to you all. So uh, this is where your quarters will be. There are, um, I don't think we have enough cots for everyone prepared. Maybe we weren't aware it was quite as large a group with you. Um, I will, I will Look for a few to be placed in here. Might be a bit cramped for now, but uh, you figure your thing out. Um, but you, there should be lock boxes for each of you, for your personal belongings. Keep Easy. close eye. Things sometimes do go vanishing if you're not careful or you're a heavy sleeper. Um, but uh, just, you know, maybe don't keep all of your very luxurious belongings upon yourself at all times. You'll be okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, welcome to set up in here. Uh, we'll do more of a. Um, a full tour once you've gotten yourself situated. Excellent. So, uh, welcome to the call. <coughs> he needs to walk away. As he walks away, can I get a vibe check on his armor class and current hit points <laughs> as compared to mine? Sure. Uh, his armor class. He seems much nicer than I expected him to be. You know, just very like accommodating. And yeah, I mean, he's not trying to like. Armor class is not on the front. Uh, good as yours. Okay. And was the only you asking for? Hit points. Current hit points. Current hit points, uh, quite a bit more than yours. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> Little toot screeds out. Quite a bit. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. He walks away, oh, and the other figures kind of, of stand there watching. 
Ooh, and the little gnome kind of creeps by and goes, Hey, welcome. Right. And just kind of darts off down the hall. Thanks after him. for being so cool. No, no, it's so nice. So, uh, nice. You know where the the weapons room is? Uh, I think we're being set up. We got weapons. I want to see what sort of shit's available. It's about this time that across the other side of the hall, the door opens and uh, Minotaur comes pushing through. Here it comes. Uh, and this Minotaur also <laughs> was present for the ball in Drusar. Oh, the, oh shit! One of the ones that was accommodating oh. for Tanish. There Sips was through. a minotaur there. I'm looking. Uh, I feel like I, I would have I recall made a note. Kind of glances down at the rest of you. All right, I'm going to show you your way around. Who, oh, you're giving us the tour? I am. <laughs> I'm Ruckman. 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 What a Ruckman. big, strong name. <laughs> Thanks. Ruckman. <laughs> Ruckman. Rockman or Rockmund? Rockmund. Uh, okay. So, you've seen the room, you've seen the war room. Most of these chambers are barracks. There's an armory kind of by the entrance way. Yeah, just go ahead and go left. And as he kind of follows you guys, you just see like slung on his back on like a leather harness, there is a like a large curve, almost an executioner's axe mm. that is like slung over that you, it's almost completely hidden by his shoulders, the way it sit back there, except for the little corner blade that now peeks out the lower half of his body. Damn. Um, nice. Do you ever stab yourself on that by accident? Well, eventually all the scars build up a resistance. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And he just kind of cool. keeps walking, and he's like wide enough to the point where the hallway almost like scrapes him shoulder to shoulder. But he just kind of pushes through. It's almost like a, it's almost like a like a, sw you know, in labyrinth, yeah, the, the, the cleaners that like push them through. He's like that behind you. Like he's pushing forward, and you have to keep moving, no, or else he's just gonna bump into you. It's just like little horn scrapes that go all the yeah, way down, pretty like, much. Yeah. like rails. <laughs> um, but yeah, kind of pushed, almost like backtracking now towards the hallway where you first entered and down the corner until eventually you move past a door that he like poof, slams open to the side and kind of gestures into it. Little little rough on the hinges, that <laughs> can be. <laughs> Go ahead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know my own strings. Mm. Waits for you all to enter. This all is right. the armory. Whoa. We have all manner of standard breastplates, weapons if acquired, uh, ammunition. If you need anything, axes, blades, daggers. It's cool for us to just Ooh, use stuff. In I'm going to go get a dagger and stick it back in my thigh holster. I lost my there last one yeah, on. Do you have tiny guns for monkey hands? <laughs> 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 what about teeny tiny daggers? What if he has teeny tiny oh, daggers? Like little, mm. Yeah. What's the smallest little weapon you have? The smallest weapon? Yeah. She's serious. Like a dart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's fine. Right. Kind of like goes stores? over and starts rummaging through this like open chest, this like storage chest on the side. <laughs> Things are like falling out the side. Ting, 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 ting. A shield like goes and rolls. <laughs> <laughs> a super loud, echoing throughout the chamber, and it like pulls in and rests out this this tiny little throwing dart. It's like it's it's almost like a kunai. Like you know, they, 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 there's the handle on it. Uh, it doesn't have the loop, but it just has a singular point. It's like loose, probably, and it looks it looks so small in his hand. Okay, this will work. Mister kind of crawls over your shoulder. Do you want this? Ah. Strike a pose. <laughs> oh, so tough! What a tough boy. Maybe you should hold it, you know, Good for this him. this side. The, the oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 guard the arm. Yes. Some point. Okay, <laughs> practice your form. To reverse grip, they call it. Nothing bad is going to come of this. Oh, where is mister? Where's mister? Oh, he's here. Oh. There he is. There. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Are you burping him? Yeah. He's burping him and he hits his first weapon. He's just going to a little bit. That's all that's going to happen. He's just like slowly stabbing her shoulder from behind. <laughs> <laughs> Ammunition is good. Do you have any like, you know, uh, explosives or black powder in case there's like an invasion launch? Do we have to set like an ambush? 
That's actually a very good idea. Yeah. I don't anticipate this, but you know, that's that's what we do. Uh, firearms, black powder, ammunition. What kind of ammunition? Do we just crossbow rounds? Dynamite. You're all pretty new here, and you're asking us for some tall orders. You well, got you got a little bit of a trial period oh, I, here before we I'm get honestly you just, all the I'm, ammunition. This stuff. was just questions. These are not necessarily. This is not necessarily requests. Yeah. We just blew through all of our shit during the uh, during the the race. So understood. No, we do. Um, we do have a like a, a powder munitions expert that works in our team, both assembling all that. But they're elsewhere uh, below. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, you want below. To that How far down does it go? Oh, there is a, uh, a basement below and three floors above. Wow. And a roof. What are you guys hey. shipping again? Not entirely sure. Oh. That's the, uh, the last question. Yeah, traditionally, traditionally you don't ask. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's fine. So how many, um, how many soldiers are here? Oh, uh, present here about 40 hmm, within a the stronghold and then we have patrols in the city of about 20, patrols outside the city of about 50, and then a few uh, separate uh, liaisons that work with other cities and areas throughout. And coming up. Exactly. So I'd say, I think our total number is somewhere in the uh, 200s, wow. 300s. And who's the big boss? Like, who's in command of all these forces? Oh, that would be Odahan. Odahan? Yes. Mm -hmm. Have you met Odahan? Um, I have not had the pleasure, no. She's around here somewhere. I'm sure she'll make herself known. Great. So, and if, uh, goes over and, and looks over on the side wall and pulls off these like kind of mustard yellow capes. Uh, cloaks, huh? And you see the pull kind of takes a few and does a count and throws a few over his arm until eventually there's just a giant bundle of yellow cloaks. Me and's mm -hmm. passing them out to all of you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> it was fucking like a was train. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, good looking out. All right. Um, so, uh, yes, I'll, I'll lead you to the next floor. Oh. There's a head and leads you along back down the hall near where your barracks were stationed. We're on first, going to second? Correct. Okay. And I just want to keep track of like the stairwells going up. Like, is it continuous stairwells? Uh, well, the first stairs that you come to uh, are at the end of the hall from where he emerged. Just leads up to the secondary floor. It isn't like a like a, a bunch of staircases in one area, but okay. you do see this stairs that go I'm up. Curious about okay. Leading into the second floor, um, you do notice other like similar repetitions of barrack chambers. There are a few doors that are partially ajar. You can see in one room is a few soldiers that are playing cards at a table. Um, and you do come across an, the opening kind of in the same space where the war room was in the lower floor, you now see is a series of long tables arranged, and this is kind of a mess hall area. Uh, you can see there's, there's already a smell in there of like old dried food, possibly a bit of musky mold, um, and uh, there's nobody currently eating in there, but it looks like there was a meal not too long ago that hasn't been completely cleaned up yet. Um, but this room in here for a num few dozen people to eat comfortably amongst all the various scattered tables. Um, you also see beyond that uh, what looks to be the entrance to a small kitchen area that's kind of hidden off to the corner. This isn't a full like block hallway, but it's like a, a three-wall hallway, and then that goes around the perimeter of the space. And on the far end corner, that's where the kitchen itself is installed. Um, kind of shows you around. Looks like this is where most of the the, uh, the meals are had. This is where the um, and there are. You'll be relegated to a specific squad over some time, and that's when the uh, some certain squads at certain times will be eating together. Um, but for now, you can just kind of join in when you need to, I suppose. But don't eat too much. Mm. We have limited stores, and people get very angry if you're taking more than you should. Are there any areas that are off limits? Uh, for now, we'll say there's no reason to go to the basement. Um, be escorted if you decide to uh, to wander elsewhere when you're not being asked to. But for now, just it would, it would not reflect well on your first day. Oh no! And if we so, really need more food, we can always just head out and grab something outside anyway. Are we allowed to leave? 
No, you were allowed to leave if you'd like, yes. Right. And do we have to um, make our presence known every time we come in? I mean, as long as you're wearing your cloaks and uh, in time, your uh, medallion. Mm. That'll be enough. Especially if you're known to the perimeter guards, which you should be as of now. Okay. Um, so, I'll continue the watch. Oh, yeah, thanks. Yeah. Leads you past a number of storage chambers, other barrack rooms. You know, there's one figure that kind of like looks like he just woke up, kind of comes out and kind of gives a nod and recognizes another person that was obviously at the Death Wish. Kind of like has that brief moment of recognition and smile. You know, that brief celebrity window once again. Hi there. Then eventually lead up to the third floor. Here, uh, the barracks chambers. They, the halls get like thinner and thinner. It kind of like pitches off the higher you get. Uh, to the third floor. There are more barracks doors, but these are more intricate, larger, and there is one very large room with a double set of iron doors uh, that is currently closed on the far end. In the middle space, where the bottom war room and the uh, central kitchen area is in this, there is a tower war room, a secondary, smaller version, and this one is intricately direct, uh, decorated. This chamber has a beautiful, like dark mahogany round table in the center of it, um, high back chairs, um, and what looks to be these hanging banners all around that carry uh, both uh, symbols of different uh, townships and cities throughout Marquette and beyond, um, as well as the in the center of it all in the back the golden kind of buzzard skull of the. Uh, the Death Maven, or the Dust Maven, the Raven Queen of Marquette. Oh, oh the dust. cultural interpretation of the mm -hmm. Raven mm -hmm. Queen. Um, at this point, uh, your Minotaur companion goes, oh, this, is the, um, this is utilized as the hosting chambers for business, the Paragon's Call, with individuals that travel f as emissaries from different parts of Alexandria. Um, downstairs, that war room is more for the the general soldier discussion is. Who's the most famous person you've ever had? That's a good question. Uh, I don't really keep up with those aspects of modern social dynamics, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> modern social. Anyone you admire? Not really. All right. That's, that's, that's man of culture, you are. I, I, I appreciate the lessons I learn on a daily basis from Ratanish. Mm. So I would say Ratanish is pretty um, cool. Oh, is he? <laughs> is he like your your mentor? Your minotaur mentor? I would consider him a teacher, both of skill, combat, talent, and <laughs> philosophy. Oh my god. Oh, yes. Wow. No sense of humor. No, he does not. <laughs> He's. Um, it's all right. Okay. Flirt harder. Hey. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> as you as you pass the perimeters, you do you do see <laughs> you do see there are breaks in the hallway that lead outward, um, and you notice there are some balconies, these like fortified balconies uh, that sit on the outside of this um, this fortress, where there are defensible walls with uh, notches for artillery. Uh, crossbows, weapons to be fired through, and occasionally, as you go through the halls, too, you see the little points of light where other um, kind of ranged, defensible positions sit. They have little arrow slits in the wall to fire from. Um, are there any rooms on this level? There are rooms. There, there, there are a few other like kind of barracks-looking chambers, but the the doors are nicer. You don't know if these are like guest chambers or if these are uh, for the more elite soldiers of the Paragon's Call. Um, and cycle through the third floor into the final staircase that ascends uh, to the roof. And as you come to the roof, which is where you saw Treshi taking Treshy. that break that one time, as you emerge, there are all manner of chairs arranged for individuals taking watch. And you're passing like call soldiers as you do. And up here, you can see there's at least five different call soldiers that are just kind of keeping eyes out. Uh, there's a large um, mount. Let's see, it first looks mounted a ballista, like a, a multi-armed, like two massive longbows that are kind of crossing each other, affixed to this massive bolt thrower. Um, but the basis of it, you see, has a number of wheels, like a caster. 
and it can be like adjusted and moved and dragged from one wall side to the other. Oof. And there's a number of barrels filled with these long, jagged-looking metal bolts. Oh shit! Um, but nice. there's brazers up here, uh, like a, a series of large signal brazers that mm. currently aren't lit, and they're just filled with all manner of dried wood at the ready in case they need to signal to something. Um, but uh, this is definitely a fortified watch point, and you can, from this height, you can see much of the city. The only things that kind of rival the size of this building uh, at this height are the cisterns, the large crooked metal mm -hmm. towers that gather the various monsoon rains when they wash through. And it's from this point also you can see, indeed, at the, uh, the distance up kind of like the northern regions of the city where the wind is currently blowing from, the horizon is a bit muddied with brown and gray, awesome. meaning there is a definitely a dust storm on its way to the city. And uh, as this happens, you can see across the city, there are other people who are starting to like close their shutters, lock off their windows, uh, open portions of different roofs and you know, kind of uh, visual elevated portions of the town are being locked down for the coming dust storm. At which point uh, uh, the Minotaur kind of leans forward and it's over. Uh, looks like we'll have to buckle down soon anyway. Well, any questions? Is there Storms anywhere that we're, that we're needed the most? On the wall, inside the building, in the courtyard? For today, anyway. For the time being, just get yourself affiliated with your space. Uh, if you get told to handle any orders, handle them. Oh, okay. Um, but primarily, you're just going to be keeping guard and watch while we uh, take uh, a good portion of our men for this uh, shipment. Mm -hmm. How soon does how soon does that start? Just so we don't <clears throat> go off and get drunk and do anything silly. Well, meantime. today's day of packing. We leave, I believe, tomorrow, uh, fairly early to try and make the most of the day, um, and then. Do you know what the day rate is? How long you guys are going to be gone? I know it's a lot. No, no. Uh, each time we do one of these shipments, it takes about about a week or so. Oh. And so that's times yeah, seven, eight. So and then whatever our day rate is, we'll be getting we're getting our, our pay for that then. Right. For a particular. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Where are you going? Mm. Uh, they're mm. I, 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 I kind of like, I just kind of gives you a look. I'm just curious. This is all just so fascinating to me, you know? I understand. The first thing you should not be is curious. If you ask too many questions, you'll be ousted or disappear. Oh. Ooh. Have you ever been disappeared before? I have. I. I'm taking them through the ropes. It'll be, it'll, they're, they're a little gray. All right, that's okay. I'll uh, make sure that their responsibilities are on your head. Will Fair. you be going with the, the shipment or will you be staying here? Oh, I'm, I'm to be with the shipment. They're sending their elite and most trusted and effective soldiers on the shipment, which is why you were staying behind. Well, you're in good hands. I hope someone makes an attack on the fort so we can show you how much we mop the floor with these fuckers. I would be very impressed, and I hope that happens. Yeah. For the sake of your glory, and not because you will ruin this opportunity and be outshone by our more trained and trusted uh, members <laughs> and employees. <laughs> I appreciate your faith. He's a comedian. He's a bit, bit, very <clears throat> blunt. And, uh, <clears throat> thank you so much. I do appreciate it. Of course. Your Rock honesty. Mind. And, very helpful. Good. That concludes the tour. Oh May return to your duties or your barracks. The choice is yours. Orders will come when they are needed. Probably. Follow me. And he kind of like pushes you all like arms out, kind of like oh, funnels you back okay. down to the that, stairs. That was a good view, but that's like okay. a parent, I, like a parent giving a tour for children in a museum, and it's just like pushing you all this way. Hey, hey, hey. Still playing with my new toy. How's my man's AC? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! His AC. This is the new. What time of yeah. day is it? I'm so excited. <laughs> it's the first. Game, I get to play with yeah, you. Yeah. Oh, keen yeah. mind, dude. I mean, uh, he's he's better than you. <laughs> no, he's a, he's a pretty big guy. He yeah. wouldn't be that hard to hit. He's not fully armored right now. He's kind of in his casual strolling uh, gear. Fun. Okay. So yeah. 
Okay. All right. I think he so leads you down through the third floor. I think it's like a to you. The second floor. Yeah. <laughs> to the first floor yeah. and back out to the courtyard where you see Ratanish is there waiting, like talking with a few people, kind of arranging more of the shipment being moved on to these this mammoth crawler. And there's like I'm like handing it on ladders. There's like a ladder up to the the first platform of the, the massive mammoth crawler, and they're kind of like doing a fireman's line. Bringing some of these crates up, and some of them are too heavy, and bringing something up. And there's, uh, even glancing over, there's a lot of them just seem standard and heavy as fuck. Like even the ones like this, the 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 smaller ones, they're kind of like, Ugh, and handing it over to the next individual who's like to get it up. It's two people to carry up, and two people to to carry it halfway up the ladder, and then lift it up enough to get to the first tier of the mammoth crawler, where two more help and bring it on. Maybe they need help loading gonna... boxes. Walk over and grab one because these people are embarrassing. Okay, cool. It's heavy. I'm, I'm pretty fucking strong. So. <laughs> it's true. It's true. So you start helping load it. Yeah, just a little bit. My hand's like, I, I appreciate that you are um, um, you are taking initiative. There's a dust storm coming. I mean, for God's sakes, you don't want to be the fuck oh, out of here for that shit. This is true. I, I will say, uh, initiative is uh, rewarded in situations of defense of the Paragon School. Initiative is considered uh, extremely bad if you are taking things you were not given orders to do. Oh, that's fair. I was just bored. Okay. I order you to help with the loading of this. Oh, place. thank we you. Need more done. Yeah. See, there's there's a process to this. You wait for the <laughs> orders, then you do them. Um, when it comes to cutting throats that do not wear the capes, uh, please take your initiative if you feel it is necessary. And if it is not necessary, then we just disavow any knowledge of you and toss you to the dogs. I forget uh, why I like that. I actually had things I liked about this town. This is crazy. But oh. if uh, whatever can be done to help, please load up quickly, especially before this storm hits. And he kind of pulls up a cloth and puts it over his face a bit. How long do these storms normally last? <laughs> it can depend. Sometimes a few hours, sometimes days. Hoping for a few hours. Mm. They're real pretty. You hear in your head, Chet, the storm will be in real nice cover if we're trying to sneak someone out. Yeah. Mm? I'm hoping for days. Mm. Unless they take treasure with them. I've, yeah, I know. That's the problem. Oh, he well. could be the package. So do you jump in and start helping them move stuff? Yes. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Yeah, what am I going to do? No, you can. <laughs> I'm strong as shit. I'm with you. Throw me a box. Yeah, our magic, our magic people don't have to. I'm made to kill. Lift the leg. Not lift. <laughs> Listen to your inner voice. Are there any boxes that are easy to look inside? There are a number that are kind of like not fully closed or some that don't have a lid necessarily. And you see all manner of masonry materials. There are Mason. stone bricks, mm -hmm. there are cases marked mortar, um, and there are tools, and it looks like there's just a lot of construction materials. Mm -hmm. But what construction? Y'all building something? <laughs> Nobody <laughs> answers. And you can see like, there's a lot of people who are like sweating. They've been doing this for a while, and it's hard, break, backbreaking work. And the new kids come up, and especially the the casters are barely helping. And as soon as you ask that question, someone just kind of glances at you and just gets back to work. Questions are the easiest way to get a deafening silence in this kind of uh, this kind of work. Why? <laughs> that was a question. <laughs> uh, there is. Uh, it catches your eye as you're having this conversation. You lean down and pick up a crate, or go to grab it, and you look down, and the size, the shape, the width, the length, the construct of this crate oh, no. looks exactly like the one that you came across in Hexen's. Shit. Uh, Fuck. Yes. Does it have a label on it? It is. It uh, actually make a perception check for me. You see some like there's some elements on it. Ten. Ten. Okay. You uh, you glance down at it and you can see there is a a well worn uh, name that is essentially like ink stamped onto part of the wood. It reads Treshy. Okay. Is it open? <laughs> no, it's closed. Yeah, I'm gonna move the car. How heavy does it feel as I'm moving it? 
It's not very heavy, and as you move it, you feel like like things inside that are kind of clinking. There's a faint sound of, of like, almost like glassware. All right, I, I load it. I pay attention to where I load it on the cart. Are there others like it, or is that just the one? You see maybe three others of the exact same size. Okay. And, uh, make about maybe like, you know, three feet across, about a foot wide, and about a foot deep or so. And kind of go over. Uh, there is. Most of them are, are masonry uh, you know, construct or construction materials. You see a handful of those crates, and there are some two small, like black super lock boxes, like reinforced chests that are in the tail end of this, kind of sitting in the middle of this whole uh, scenario. Um, are they heavy? Or are they? Oh, you haven't gotten them yet. Oh, okay. They're kind of like in, everything is being moved away from around it, so you have to move the rest of the boxes. And people grab someone else grabs another one of the. The treshy marked uh, crates and starts moving over and setting over to you to pass up the front there. The black lock box is also marked with the treshy stuff, or uh, make a perception check. That's a two <laughs> plus something. Uh, yeah, that's a two. Don't you no. have advantage no. on perception? Oh, you're right. It's, your been, shield? it's been a while. It's been a whole week. It's been a while. Uh, but still pretty crap. Uh, that's uh, twelve. Twelve. Okay. Not as bad as. So yeah, the uh, the the black crates do not uh, have a treshy name on them that you can see, at least from like where they're sitting and over there in that space. What are the AC of the crates? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty high. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll do it harder. <laughs> How fully packed are the crates? Is there some space in there packed to the gills? Um, I mean the the ones with construction materials are packed. Pretty well, but there's some some small gaps in there, like a foot here. Then you know, all all with lids or tops off, or it varies. Some are closed, some are not. It looks like some of it was just kind of mm-hmm. what was amassed and found. Some of it was, you know, <laughs> shifted with or shipped and brought along with some semblance of well, this is just stonework and mortar. No one's going to try and steal this from these people. Right. So there wasn't a lot of care put into that. But the other, the other. Treshy Mark crates uh, and the more lockbox ones are being watched. Like as you're kind of grabbing them, there is definitely like for you. Like this has been nice. They brought. They didn't seem like they were paying too much attention, though. There always was someone around. And now that you're here in the middle, doing this, you begin to realize that like everybody, everyone is watching you. They're kind of like using this as a, a gauging mechanism. Yeah. Um, I can't lift crates because it'll rip my arm off the shoulder. <laughs> um. So I like touch them and pretend to help, um, <laughs> and then I, I want to look kind of back up at the fortress and see: Do I see anybody peeking through windows? Mm. Do any sign of treasure? Basically, just want to see if there's treasure. Boom! Mm, that's not too bad. Seventeen. Seventeen. You do not see anybody that resembles Treshy, from what you can tell. You can see like there are the bodies on the roof, uh, the you know, the very very top of the the fortress that are kind of patrolling and looking down. One of them just kind of keeping an eye on what you're doing and looking just past the walls beyond. That third floor. Are there windows? Uh, there there are no windows. There are arrow slits in the occasional there reinforced balcony that is defensible. Balconies, right, right. The balconies, which are open, you know, like like they're. They're not enclosed with glass or anything, but they're just like they have these heavily reinforced stone walls, almost like uh, like crenellated sides, where they're high enough to defend anybody who's being shot at by any sort of ranged weaponry, but they can still fire through pretty easily. And they're they're open up top. They are yes. Doors on the other side, I guess, just regular doors getting mm-hmm. into the okay. I'm gonna go over and try to mm-hmm. see if I can move. A crate or something, and help out. Okay. But at the same time, I do that. I'm going to use um, telekinesis to try to push the lid on one of the treshy crates and see if it will move at all. Okay. Uh, nothing that I'm. It's so hard not to go invisible. Nothing right. that I'm looking at. Nothing that I'm like touching or anything. I'm just going to try to do it with my mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, it kind of no. it shifts ever so slightly, but as it does, you hear. And feel resistance, and the slight flick of what you didn't notice was a lock on the box. Okay. It's locked. I guess we. And that is the last one of the Tressy crates being 
lift it uh, as you're like kind of helping carry it over to the butt base of the uh, ladder that leads up to the the crawler, which hands it off to you and one of the other figures that grabs and it. It's, uh, and this is just one cart. They're not loading multiple carts. So there's just one cart. Run and go back and get that ring. Like a couple of carts. Uh, you don't see any carts anymore. Like these, were, these were offloaded. Yeah. Uh, and then they may have been here for a short time, uh, and then now they're being loaded up onto this. This. Crawler. Yeah, this crawler. Okay. This is the last one, and we're carrying it. I'm helping. Am I helping mm-hmm. out like somebody else? Care obviously. I can't yeah, you're helping. Somebody else is helping you carry it, and it's kind of like giving that look of like. You're not even trying. Oh. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. And then as we're walking towards the ladder, I'm going to trip. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, so you're trying to, to trip and push. I'm just gonna get fired. I just want it. I just want the crate to fall. I know. I understand. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and make a strength check. Oh boy. No. Five. Five. Okay. Uh, so you kind of trip and try and make it fall. Uh, he, the the person holding him goes like whoa and like catches the other side and it slams into the ground and kind of cracks, but uh, nothing I'm more so than sorry. that. You do hear a heavy like clattering of some like heavy glass. Nothing that sounds like shattering, but definitely like. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just. I, I was no, just, just trying don't, to help. Don't even don't touch it. Don't. I got it. It's not. Okay. Any reaction like, stand out above from all the people looking down on us in that moment. Uh, you can see everyone kind of like lean forward, and the the general s- sense of tension in the courtyard now is definitely elevated. I will not help anymore. I'm sorry about that. I was just trying to picks it up and brings it over, and hands it to you and the other individuals helping you carry it up. And you lift it and set it up onto the car. So all of those are now loaded. Uh, now it comes back to the two lock boxes and a handful of other masonry uh, crates that are going to be handed beyond that too. Um, is if nobody's volunteering for the lock boxes? I then, am. Okay. Go, girl. So you go over, and th- these, as you walk up, they are. It's like a black metal that even the layer of dust on it, you can see beneath it. It's really, really well made. Uh, it looks reinforced, and there is a heavy lock on the front. Um, there are two handles on the sides that are kind of bolted in, and as you go to, to reach uh, one, one of the other, uh, unless anybody else comes up there, another person comes over to grab the other handle. I'll help. Thank you. No problem. Okay, you both lift it up. <sighs> it's yeah. lighter than you expected. <laughs> oh. Like, the, the, the box itself has a good heft to it, but whatever the contents are, it isn't like filled with rocks or metal ingots. So not too bad. Just walking it to the to the crawler. Yep. Okay. Just walking it over. Walk it over to the bottom where I grab it. I pick it up. Um, I assume by myself. It's pretty light. The other person next to you goes and reaches the other handle yeah. and it's like I here, I'll just that's, Get the other one. Okay. One what kind of what kind of locks on it? What kind of what's the is it is it don't do is it just don't do. a standard standard closed Maybe. lock box or uh, th- there is a a fairly well made uh, latch on it. Mm-hmm. It's you know it's not you know masterwork uh, make by any means, but it definitely isn't a easy general store bought right. you know padlock or anything. I'll make sure I'll make sure to set it down in a direction where where. It, I'm gonna try and scoot it in a way where that lock will could be accessible. Okay. If it were just, just you know, don't stick it in the lock. Yeah. Is there another one, or was that? There's another. There's, There's okay. two of those. Can I have your help again? Of course. Thank you. I'm gonna look at the box and see if there's any. Thing written on the box. Most of the crew, the that, lock, was, most of the crew that was doing the hard work before has now backed off, and they're letting you do the majority of it. Partially because they're exhausted, and they're kind of letting this be a trial run of the new crew, just doing manual labor without fucking it up. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are you looking for specifically? How big is the box? No, oh, it's about a foot and a half by a foot and a half. It's almost like a cube, almost. Um, with the slight like rounded edges on the top, but it's uh, it's a very well made metal chest. Okay, I'm gonna look for markings on the lock, on the around it. See if there's anything on there. 
And since we're in the cargo area, can I give a like a and just see if there's any sort of unusual scent fave feed or undead? Yes, you may. Go ahead and roll for that smell to the air. Um, and you are searching for, you said, markings around? Markings, the lock, any names. Okay. Make a perception check for me. 18. 18. 21. 21, okay, 18. You smell in the air. I mean, there's definitely the scent of uh, fey from Fern, um, but nothing undead or fiendish or additionally fey that catches your immediate attention. Um, no markings around the lock, but at the very, very top of the box, there is a symbol that is like, faintly engraved in the top of it. Um, it's like three elongated diamonds that all can join in the center. Almost like a, like there's two points here, a third point with like a, a sort of almost like curling underneath of multiple small spines, like almost like two hands holding in the bottom, but they're like thin and long. Oh. Jenny. Hmm. Can I see what's on the top? Yeah. Can I see what's on top? You can see it as you're carrying the box out. Yeah. You want to make a history check if you guys sure. want to. I've only been around for fucking ever, y'all. You're a youngster. That's true. That's uh, oh, dirty 20. I love the one. Uh, this, this technically you wouldn't have an advantage on because this oh, is not pertaining to the certain creatures you hunt. Hey, Fiend, are dead? Uh, not as good. No. Uh, 14. 14? She got a one. A one. A one. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You you see the symbol. You don't recognize or acknowledge really what it means. It's probably like a flower. I have a question. Yes. The person loading the crates and the chests up on top of the the crawler prowler. What is yeah. it? Yeah. Um, the mammoth crawler. The is it just one person like? Stacking things up on top. There are two figures up there that are accepting. They were something like the larger, heavier crates. There was like a, especially for the heavy masonry materials. There's that the chain for that purpose. You guys got there just in time for most of the heavy shit to be done, and now you're like coming over and picking up the lighter shit. And there's a little bit of like uh, an, an air of, of course, amongst the people who've been here for <laughs> as much time as it took to get the rest of it loaded up there. And from where you can glance when you're approaching it too, there's a lot of masonry. There's a lot of like construction materials that had already been loaded up there. Okay. Um, but, uh, Where was the the first black chest placed? Uh, it was placed a little further in, like meant to be kind of, there was almost a gap left centrally amongst the rest of the, most of it was arranged almost like a C formation, and for the the more fragile materials, the uh, those have been set, it looks like, towards the center of that grouping. Okay. So don't, do it. don't, don't, don't. The twinkle in your eye. I'm not. I, that's always there. And then we, put it down. Okay. okay. Are we handing the box up now, or you put it down? Or we'll. I guess I'm gonna pass it off to Ashton. Yeah. Up to you. What are you? Should I try to? Put it in my skirt. No, we're going to. What the fuck? No, no, no. Hand it up to Ashton. Hand it up. We're being watched. What an interesting way. What's an interesting way to 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 get killed? Why don't fucking we just pick it up? It left up the second black box and placed it upon me. We're on stage at the Globe Theater. No one see. No one will see. Everybody looking. Okay. With that, uh, there are about five more crates of construction materials that one after the next, and you're starting to really kind of break a sweat here in the heat with the work, for those of you who are putting the work in. Um, but you do manage finishing loading the mammoth crawler, at which point they set it up there, they take a large like <laughs> woven net and lay it over the boxes and begin to kind of bolt it down. You could see on these like hooks in the edges of the mammoth crawler to keep it grounded and keep it Locked in for the coming sandstorm. Yeah, do we see the storm on the horizon? The, the, at this point now, the sky is starting to darken a bit, and the wind's picking up. That, um, and folks are starting to like glance around at the leadership. And at this point, uh, as the final elements are situated, uh, Ratanish approaches. Very good for your first uh, orders. Well done. Now, no further orders beside. The, Sit tight, stay in your chambers, uh, maybe get some food in a bit when it is prepared in the mess hall, and wait out this storm. Well done. So. When is everyone leaving again? Tomorrow. 
That's when you will be given your next round of orders to keep watch. Sorry, I just didn't know as soon as like we were taking over like guard and you'll be notified. All right. Mm. So, welcome to Paragon School. First day, not so bad. Do you have any hats, like matching hats? I just feel like the blue clashes with the yellow, and I just want to rep. Call. We do not have any hits. I'll make Blue some. Blue does not clash with yellow. Look at FCG. It looks great. Blue and yellow go together so Excuse well. Excuse me. Well, Excuse we'll me. Blue. I thought we just were just worry about yourself, clothes. okay? I swear they're really Long good at what they do. Purple and yellow. Oh, they're really. really <laughs> they're really. Happy to think blue and yellow works very well. Oh. But no hats. You are welcome to make a hat if you want to wear one, but we have no uniform hats. It's not part I'll of make one, uniform. and then you tell me if you want any duplicates. I just need a little advance notice. I'm very backed up in orders these days. Very well. And I, I will say, you know, personal hobbies are encouraged here at the Paragon School. Oh, you are not intended to be uh, waiting alone, staring at the wall while you're between orders. Do you have any hobbies? I do. Detect thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I love you. I love you. You, so you immediately much. get a wave of uh, oh, imagery, like, like just surface imagery curling through his mind. Uh, you see what looks to be uh, the very small tools meticulously adding filigree to what looks to be like a piece of jewelry. Um, you see, like, like the bending of metals and like these little curls, and then setting, so setting a little stone in there. Yeah, and so uh, as you get this image, he looks and goes, "None of your business." <laughs> Understood. Well, uh, it is time to make haste with the interior before things get too bad. Um, go. We'll see you inside. My Etsy store is called Rattan hyphen ish. Etsy store. If <laughs> discount if you buy in bulk. <laughs> uh, at this point, uh, it looks like a number of the perimeter guards do not get to leave, and but they are now like heavy goggles, face wrapped in like a, a very thick cloth. Mm. Um, and they are still just walking in the perimeter, but keeping low. And as uh, as you all begin to step into the interior, you just the first wave of dust kind of begins to really darken the sky above as it hits. As you step in, the doors close behind you, and you begin to hear just the sound of dust and sand kind of hitting and scraping across the exterior of the fortress, kind of giving this faint, echoing sound, almost like a Almost like a, a, a very distant crackle. At which point, you can all the different members of the uh, call begin to kind of scatter amongst the interior of the fortress, and you get the sense that you're kind of left to your devices at the moment. Never alone, because there's many people within the fortress, but um, you get the sense that there isn't an, an immediate sense of worry because anywhere you go, you'll likely find somebody. Mm. And we're in a big donut, right? Like a courtyard where we can see higher levels around us? Not uh, the courtyard anymore. No, we're in You've now level. entered the fortress. But when we were loading, we were. When you were loading, you were in the courtyard, yes, which kind of mostly surrounds, the fortress doesn't sit right in the center, it's kind of a little off-center, um, but there, the courtyard does surround the fortress with the wall that's kind of like a large pentagon. Yeah, we can, uh, we can head to our, our quarters and have a little. Yeah, let's let's head to our, let's head to our quarters. Catch up. All right, you head back there, and you can see two additional cots have been added. There are now cots for all of you to stay. The floor is very cluttered now. There's maybe a good like foot and a half of space between each cot, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's not great, but it's better than not having beds, I suppose. Uh, there are empty shelves. Uh, once again, you have the lock boxes at the base of each uh, cot. And it's it's yours. I reach in and pull out the Trishy Scribble. 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 Mm -hmm. Should we make sure we're not being watched say, or listened to? We're in, little, we're in our quarters. Do a little, yeah, maybe they bugged it. A little what? Uh, well, I'm just looking. Magic. I'm not speaking. A, mm -hmm. I can't. I can't detect magic. I thought you had a thing where you could not ever. Well, you identify it. You identify <laughs> the object. Never mind. Oh, I can. You can detect magic. Yeah, I can. Oh, let's oh, do that. Great. Really amazing. I didn't know I could do that. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. 
Swiss Army knife. Level seven. While we're well, in the house, playing. Oh, shit. How long can I have I been able to yeah. do that? That's a toothpick? Oh, yeah. That's supposed to be a toothpick? Really? I'm just going to walk along the walls and look for any holes and see if I can find That's a really good idea. Detect yeah, magic. She's detecting magic. <laughs> or if you can hear any, can you hear people's brain if they're like paying attention? So you're detecting so. magic in your, in your chambers where you're sitting? Yeah. Okay, looking around the room, glancing about, nothing seems to spark a glow of magical essence beyond what you uh, have on yourselves, necessarily. <laughs> nothing in the, like, I guess, yeah. under, the, <laughs> under the cots in the hallway, I don't know, they're just fucking... I don't, I don't... You pulled out the thing? Uh, yes, so the for the, the item that you have that is tracking... Uh, the ring. The ring. Yeah. Um, did you turn the ring? We put we returned the ring to the shop, I think. I think you did, yeah. So yes. we were hoping maybe he But unless went someone got, got, it? got it. Seems to be pointing away okay. <laughs> in the direction of where okay. it was. But I, I I have an I I think I can because I've seen him, I know him, I could I could find him here if I if we you could? Yes. We have if to he's find here. him before he leaves. We do know this, this, right? This storm could be an excellent cover to get him out. Absolutely. I the moment he gets on that that crawler, he's going to go with him, right? I mean, I maybe. Mean, we assume uh, if all that stuff that's is a, going. I don't necessarily know if it's his stuff going. It might be that they're doing a job for him, and that I don't know. It looks like they're building something. Would one of those things head out in the middle of a sandstorm? Or no. They delay? Maybe they're heading out to that that camp outside of town I that wouldn't. we saw from. Uh, yeah. Well, we we saw. They would have to be oh, insane to go out in this weather. Oh. That would that would that's that's. Chet and I saw a symbol on top of one of the little Draw it. boxes. Can well, you, it was like you... this, and then it had like diamonds all coming together, three of them. I'll try it. <laughs> Does that sound familiar to any of us? Uh, um, anybody here trained in history or yes. proficient in history? Go ahead and roll. No. Oh. Come on, Rudy. Pretty good, 22. 22. Uh, yes, you recognize the symbol she draws, you know, uh, this to be the symbol of the Cerberus Assembly. The Cerberus Assembly. Okay, same bad people. The Soldiers Academy is not the same as the no, Cerberus. No, no, but they're, they're entwined in some ways. From the Soldiers. Okay. Trent, the surface assembly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know nothing. But one's wow. a university, the other's a cabal of powerful mages. What's the symbol for this? The Soldiers Academy. Uh, it's a. Tr it's three. It is three diamonds. diamonds. The, for the for the surface assembly, it's the th it's the three diamonds and the. Uh, yes. The symbol of the 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 eight the candles there around it. it. Soldiers Academy. The mascot is a wildcat. Yeah. <laughs> it's a Spartan actually, which is really weird in Exandria. There one yeah. doesn't even have Spartans. <laughs> Let's go, Spartans don't exist. <laughs> well, I would say if his luggage is getting loaded onto that crawler, we can assume he's probably trying to get the fuck out of town. I don't know. I don't necessarily think that's ah. that. That doesn't. That's not luggage on there. Yeah, but it, why yeah. would it go without him? Those were very fancy and bolted with locks. He yeah, might be building something similar to what. Fern's parents were building. I'm I just saying it would something. make more sense if we assume he is leaving, because if he leaves, we're fucked. Right, but we won't leave until the, if he the leaves, storm we're not, goes we're not No, super but I'm fucked, just saying we are we've got, definitely. what time is it? Uh, I'd say all the work you've done, getting Philly to here, it's like mid-afternoon. So we've got the day. Got or the rest however of the day long, in the evening. Or however long this storm asleep, takes. asleep, we could grab him. The storm takes. Why would he be asleep right now? No, at well, night. Oh, that's right. <laughs> so we know that. It'll probably be garden. If the storm gives us more time in the morning, fantastic, but we can't assume that it will. It's probably in the basement, right? Or there was or a in, locked room. Or in those top rooms. Can any of us change our appearance? Yeah, I can. We can go invisible. <laughs> <laughs> Did you I want think, another? Uh, <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> I think a, I think a snatch and grab in, inside the building is a terrible idea. I think that if we're going to do this, we're going to have to Can't have a way out. <laughs> well, yeah, if we grab him and we put him in the thing, no one will know we have him when we go. Put him in what thing? Oh, in that right. thing. In the hole. 
It's just about finding him and... Yeah. But they won't out. leave without him in the morning. That's what I'm... It's a big like, assumption that he's going with them, but yeah. But but it's safer to assume it is that he is, because if he's not, then cool, we can just snatch him when everyone else is gone. If he's not already gone. Oh, no. We don't know if he's here. We don't know. Already. We can find out. Maybe. You said you can detect people. I can know where he is right now, so when the party's getting ready to leave, I can detect if he's with them, I guess, but by then it's too late. However... Well, why don't you just look for him now, then? Yes. I could. I could find him in the place right now. We'll what are we going to do right with him? Now. We're going to just go get him right But then when they go to look for him, they'll be like, where is he? Lock the hatches. Batten down the gates. Well, no one is going to leave. We don't we have, to, have stay to get here. him and leave. There's nothing keeping us here. And know. even if Walls, you just guards. find out where he is now, we at least know if he's up or down. We just agreed to do this job. We're just going to quit without two weeks' notice. <laughs> <laughs> That's not right. That's easy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can, you you can ignore point. your HR protocols. <laughs> yes. You can just, you know. I mean, how just are they going to have time to find right a replacement now. for us and train them? We're in the state of California. <laughs> They're very forgiving oh. the, the, the laws. Is Lazarus a right to work city? <laughs> yes, right. actually. Yeah. So, side note, we know that Odahan, well, we don't know. We think that Odahan has had dealings with Cerberus Assembly members, so right. small chance one is here today. Also, if we can... Dalith. Sorry. No, I wasn't Fern, you were going to say something. I was not, actually. Yeah, were you going to say doot to doot? Yeah. Okay. Doot to doot. Here. Here, I, our mission was to come, our mission was to come grab Tresh and get out of here. Yeah. But don't you feel like our mission has changed a bit now? There's some grand conspiracy going on that involves gods and the moon mm -hmm. and something being built in the desert. If we nab this guy and leave, we don't track any of that. We don't get to see what they're building in the desert. We don't need, get to see what the moon is doing. We don't get to eat, go to Eos. We don't get to do any of that. We just go back home with a guy. No, we go back home and get an airship. Correct. And, and then, then we what? go wherever we need to. We can also just toss his ass on the airship, and then we can take the crawler to Eos. I'm just saying, if we follow these people, we might learn more than if we just abandon them. Mm. Oh. Mm. Oh, I like that. I say we listen to the that way killer if, assassin over here. If he's if he's on the cart, then we're safe. When he's not on the cart, we're also safe. That so kind of covers all the tracks. Stow away onto the crawler. Seven people on the on a cart. They'll never see us. Yeah, what? <laughs> Question, is there a way that we can, is there something we can do to the cart to actually know where it's going and when? Like if there's a way that we can track it? We could go get we'll that, ring. that ring. Put Correct, it and put it on the Throw cart. it on the cart. Or, wait, do we have sending stones? We only have one. We could use the sending stones. We only have one. Oh, but or, or, Imogen could hide on the cart. You can communicate with us wherever you are. Right. I just hide on it and just send y'all messages. Hard to know. Okay. Oh. Well, so I could do it. First step one. Ooh, uh, I can send, send as well. anybody alone. Okay, Treshy, step two. Go get the ring. Because that covers all of the things that we're considering, right? We don't already have it. We didn't buy it. It's the fucking shop. We right? left it at the fucking shop. I remember when everyone was like, what if he goes back and get it? Yeah, but we can come and go out of the fort, plus there's a fucking storm coming. We'll be back there and back in no time. Yeah, I agree. All right. That storm is more Who's than gonna you gonna think go get it's going to be. But Please. I've seen Someone fast and furious. I, I could go. <laughs> You're on either of those things. <laughs> <laughs> Make three stops on the way. Okay. Should we locate Treshy? Yes, let's yeah. do that first. Yeah. While I'm doing that, yep. I'm going to take out uh, a <laughs> backpack. <laughs> don't worry, I'll move slowly. <laughs> take out a, I, I got a glass eye, I don't remember where from. Uh, I got uh, some copper wire. I know this is a big ask because it doesn't involve wood. Can you fashion this into some sort of a bauble or trinket or piece of jewelry that looks homemade, like a brooch? 
Britannica. Are you asking me to work with the metal? I am. Roach? Give it here. Roach? Roach. Roach. What's the difference? Roach is not a brooch. Anyone is just a brooch is a a poorly said brooch. I've heard people say brooch. They were wrong. Well, you're also, you lived in <laughs> ancient times. Yeah, my yeah. name is a reach back. back that, that's that's the real do it. What do you <laughs> want? What do you, you want the eye to be wrapped in the little piece yeah, of Yeah, like it's right. some sort of like a pin or like something. A brooch. Hold like on. A pin. Give, give me the eye. Give me the bed. Give me the bed. I got some insight into what uh, our, our main contact here. I tear a little yeah. strip off of my yellow cloak. Oh, you want to give this a gift to return? And I take the strip and I wrap it around my eyes like a blindfold. Or he'll see the Oh, my God. Or he'll see the the Chetney's working on it, and he'll be like, "Oh, you have you have an interest oh, in, in metal work as well." And then they can bond and become best friends. And we can get more information. Out of it. I see. That's not a bad idea. Oh. Sorry. How's he doing? Blindfolded. Let's roll. Uh, can you go ahead and make a dexterity check guidance. for me mm-hmm. with disadvantage because you're blindfolded? But guidance. Ooh. <laughs> Nine. Ooh. Okay. Um, okay. It uh. So it definitely like you you put it together, and it definitely resembles kind of like. I guess you can call it a brooch. Or a brooch. This is more like a brooch. Right. Let's be honest. <laughs> uh, with a nine, this is this is definitely a brooch. Uh, it. it it's a weight class thing. It it looks almost like a corkscrew. More than like like to actually apply it to something, you have to like push it into a thick enough material that'll like grasp into it, but might hurt yourself in the process. But you know, it's it's a piece of jewelry. I had to back over and take off the blindfold. It never happened. <laughs> never happened. <laughs> I actually never had it. You can have it. It hasn't happened yet. But if if that man comes around, just act like you just made it. No, and I can say that. Chetney makes jewelry. Okay. I don't fucking make jewelry. Uh, yeah, but Listen to lie. me, Chet. This is not a bad thing. You're allowed to expand your creativity. I don't know if there's a big market for wooden jewelry. I'd wear it. Yeah, wooden beads. <laughs> Would it uh, beautiful. turn you on a little? I'm going to put my brooch. Where, do you, where should I put the brooch? I don't know to where. be full I didn't display. make right that. Right on your bosom. And like yet we right watched you make it. Yeah, put it like where your flower is right here so it like catches the cleaves. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm going to put it right here. It's beautiful. I mean, it's adequate. He did his best. He <laughs> did, did his best. Nothing. I did nothing. It's pretty good for not having his, worked with, with metal before. Well, I mean, it's, his eyeballs. best could only be that good because he's just, you know, everyone's got their limits and... Yeah. If Clearly, Chetney has limits. If I locate this person, I've only got an hour. <laughs> All right. Don't get mad. Well, it's it's nice. Really it's very doing. nice. Up or down. That's all I care about right now. Oh, Are we allowed to leave the room? Yeah. Yeah, we yeah. can go anywhere we want. It's at the basement. Just not go to the front all right. spot. I'm going to try to find him. We ready? Right. Yeah. Are you casting? Locate creature. Locate creature. Okay. Do, 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 do. Head of one of the wealthiest Mahan houses. You finish concentrating on this spell for a moment, and as you kind of open your eyes once more, you see uh, the the lens eyes of FCG kind of glowing this faint white coloration. And as you envision the individual of Armand Treshi, uh, you sense a strong pull in a downward direction. Oh, the fucking basement. So like cool. almost directly beneath you. Ooh. Oh, directly beneath. What's this? What's the floor made out of? That's Stone. harder. If only I had chosen a different spell, I could. Stone shape. Below us. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be great. I'll go check it out. Wait, how? Invisibility. Yeah. Do it. All right, take the take the jewel thing just in case you get stopped. What am I gonna do with that? You're gonna charm the Minotaur Wait. man. I'm gonna make it. Wait, I'm I'm gonna make a connection I'm with you right now. Letting this happen at this point. Wait, the jewelry is not the Minotaur. Man. And no. Oh, yeah. wait, that was Ritanish. Yeah, if you yeah. find him and you like can get to him, him <laughs> in my, my wait, give him in the my hole. mind space. Give him the hole just in case he can get him. You want the hole? <laughs> <laughs> Say it again, but slower. <laughs> Here you go. Just don't <laughs> lose it. Okay. Kind of tuck it in my harness. Just 
let us know if you, you know, see him. Just just tell me in my head if you, if you, if you spot him and you have access We're to connected? him. We're connected? What are we going to do? Balls. Yes. Wang. What exactly are we going to do if, if we... Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. How do we get out of here? I'm not going to try. I'm just trying to run a little recon. We don't even know anything exactly. about the basement. I'm just right. saying. Okay, recon well, I'm okay with. Well, went through it, right? As a little... Oh, yeah. uh, you went through the basement? When she was a little quokka. You made it to the basement or on the ground floor? I did. I you did. made it to the basement? No. You didn't make it to the basement. She doesn't know anything. I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I, it all looked the same. We don't even know where the entrance to the basement is, right? No. Like when we went upstairs, were there stairs going down? Uh, no, there was a hall to the left. I'll try there. So you're just going to take the portable hall. Mm -hmm. Just to keep you know what case. I'm going to do? I'm going to go invisible. <laughs> <laughs> Shady, before you go, if you get him, get him in the hole, come back and put us in the hole, and then go out. Uh, I'll be right back. Anyone want to come with me? What, where are you where going? Are you going? Ashton, Orem. To poop? What? I'm going to go get that fucking ring. Oh, God. You're There's leaving? no way to get out. They're not going to let you out of the... They said we yeah, can come. We, we can come and go. go. Yeah, we can come this shit. I'm going, Sorry. if anyone wants to come. Oh, I'm coming. I Do you have your goggles and a mask? Hold on. Sure, my my eyes have a weird glassy layer. Whatever you do, them. protect it's your fine. lungs. Right. Oh, <laughs> it's be, oh boy. Be safe. I will. I, I'll be right back. I promise. I'm. You better be. Yeah, you need an accompany. I'm going. I'm fucking. All right. Here, a local. Come on. Yeah. Okay. I want the fucking ring back. I've yeah. got this cool orb, and I want the fucking ring. Okay. I'm going for that ring with Ashton. Yeah, you're coming with me. I'm coming with you. All right. Okay. So you come to the front Shit. gates, and uh, there are two uh, members of the call that are there kind of, you know, keeping watch, sitting as you approach, like, okay, if that's what you want to do. And they kind of pull the gates open immediately. It is just blustering, darkened sandstorm. Like, you, you push outward into it, and your eyes are stinging, and even just like trying to go through, you can just vaguely make out the shape of the wall around you. It's middle of the day, but the shadows that are being cast in the density of this, this dust storm, uh, you can just see the darkness of the wall, uh, and kind of gauging the shapes of things that were out and about. And the, the mammoth crawler looks like a looming beast. Standing, you know, two and a half stories tall over there, and it takes you a second to kind of gauge it. And you push past, holding your eyes tight, go to the main gates, and you can see there's uh, nobody there to crank and open them. But you do see on this side there are two large chain cranks, and so you can go ahead. I'm gonna go. May we all have a friend this good? It's hmm. it's. Difficult. They're they're situated in like a pulley system where it doesn't take a whole lot of strength to do it in comparison to the size of these gates, but it's still difficult anyway, especially with the storm going and you push and the gates open just enough for the two of you to leave and you push out into the street. And looking out here in the street, you can just see the vague shapes of buildings nearby and you can see kind of the sh it is visibility is dog shit I'm right now. Take out a, a, a length of rope and I'm gonna hand I half agree. of it to you. I was gonna do the exact same thing. Do not let go. All right. You have got like I'm, yeah, masks and masks and goggles, and I've got the hood up and anything I can do to. I should know the easiest way to get to the market, or at least a way of finding the next, like what direction to walk from where we're at to the next uh, physical object that would identify where we are. Yes, uh, I would say make a survival check, uh, and if you you get advantage because this is your home turf. And I have the orb. Oh, that's true. You do have the orb. In the direction. Yeah. Oh. The fucking ring is. No, that. It doesn't. Oh, it does. It does take. You. A, yeah. It does. So we do have a compass. <laughs> so you do. So you don't have to worry about as much. As you begin to consider that, you pull out the orb, and you can see like in the dust there's that like faint blue glow as you hold it underneath, and you kind of clutching onto both sides of that cloth, push on, following this, weaving through streets and alleys until eventually you come to the outside, of. The. Yes, that is exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> oh, wait, there it was. The Bank of Renewal? No. Oh, the Bank of Renewal, yes. Uh, so you come to the outside of the bazaar. All the shops are shuttered, all of the carts are closed. Um, it is right now a, a ghost town as everyone has locked in for this storm to pass. 
Um, and so you kind of move past the main gates, and it just kind of you see like the shadow of the the main entryway arch that you kind of push past. Uh, so when's pu- pushing back, a couple of loose things kind of tear past you, kind of hitting the ground and then disappearing into the storm beyond. As you continue to push through, eyes squinted into the middle of the main thoroughfare, uh, gauging and looking at the orb. You eventually come over to the exterior of the the shop where the hero family currently holds the ring beyond, but the door is closed. Bank of renewal. Bank of renewal. Uh, door's closed? Yes. Sorry, seeking shelter? <laughs> the door opens up and already like, at the, the you see add on there, like eyes closed, like, quick, quick, come in, come in. Thank you, thank you. Uh, so Let's sorry, go. thank you. <sighs> oh, you are. Quite crazy to have been out there yourselves. Yes. Well, we kind of got caught out there. We didn't plan for that. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, it's all right. Well, you're welcome to lay low for here as long as you need. Oh, thank you. Oh. Goodness, quite the shop you have here. Yes, don't take anything. No, oh, no. Where would we go? True. Oh. If it lets up a little, then we do have to go back, and we do have to go back eventually. Know, so if it doesn't let up, we're going to have to go back into it. Um, right. Well, let's just see what happens. Mm-hmm. All right. So, what do you do while you're in here? Look around. Look around. Small Look at the... talk. <laughs> okay. Keeping some small talk and glancing around as you wait for a period of time. Mm-hmm. So, mm. how have you been? <laughs> oh, you know, good, good. How have you been? Oh, so much oh, dust in my eye. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're real good. You're real good all the time. I'm great. You are. Oh my God, don't be so judgmental. Oh, I'm Ashton. not, you're, 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 you're great, you're kooky. <laughs> you're a good time, you're very, you're, you're kooky, you're, you're mm. fun. Why? Ooh, look at these weapons. It's fun. Weapons in there? I don't know. I'm making it up as I go. Yeah, it's a jewelry shop. Mm. Uh, well, it's it's yeah. it's more of like a like what are a, these decorative actually, weapons. Actually, it's it's a pawn shop. So like, so so you may see. I would say yes. You you do see a handful of weapons that are hanging. Um, a lot of it's more like collectibles and jewelry and things that are more. Where are the shop owners? They're sitting on opposite sides of the room in the chair, just kind of watching the two of you as you make small talk. <laughs> So, thing is, yoink! <laughs> Just kind of like glancing over the cases. Yeah, no, I, I spend time. I've known a lot of kooky people in my time. They're always fun. Mm. Mm. And there's always other shit happening. Mm. Looking to make a purchase while you're stuck here? Maybe. You know, mm. I'm always like, oh, I, I must say, I just. I've got a little bit of you know, impulse control issues, and so while I wasn't looking, I'm kind of suddenly looking. She has a lot of impulse controls issues. Look at these rings. If you want something, just get it. What? Uh, just. Who mm. want life is short? Life is short. Life is very short. Why did you have to say that so like? Meh, if you want something, get it. It's right here. Hmm. Is the ring here, by the way? Yeah. Is it uh, here? Make a perception check, both of you. Oh no, <laughs> that always goes well. Fourteen. Fourteen. Uh, Sixteen. Sixteen. You pick out the ring before you do, but yeah, it is still present and kind of set within these little. Uh, I want to say like a, like soft and leather that has these slits cut into it. They're kind of placed independently along the way to kind of reveal them, but keep in place. You know, I'm not really into like pawn stuff too much because it's hard to tell. You know, it's quality. You know what I mean? I mean, I don't care about quality as long as it looks good. I mean, who cares what it's made out of as long as it does the purpose, which is. No, what if it's, you know, from a scorned lover and it's cursed? Most of. Scorn lovers I've ever met, and with they had shitty jewelry. 
So yeah, well, I mean, bad. like I, most of the ones I know were kind of didn't have shit. So you know, it doesn't really doesn't have to be a real ruby or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, huh. Well, what what do you see? I don't know. Look at that. Hmm. I don't know. I kind of like this one though. Yeah, that's nice too. Would you like any help? Uh, I don't know. If, uh, just, just looking. <laughs> I got cash. Whatever. I guess we're stuck here for a bit. I guess we could try on some rings. <laughs> All right, maybe we'll try on some rings. If you don't mind, I don't want to. You know, you were so sure. gracious to um, just go in. So yeah, to open your doors. I don't. All right, we can try on some rings. Um, let me see your fingers. Mm. <laughs> Those are very dainty. Yeah, like because you're still like wrapped up, and it's like it's a close look, and it's like ah, uh, very cold to the touch. Oh, you sorry, should get. Well, you need to to warm. I have a poor circulation. Extremely poor. Mm -hmm. Um. I do not know if I have anything that, that might fit you. you. Uh, it was from this shop. <laughs> That's true. It pulls the ring that you pointed out, the, mm. and it is like Trisha and goes, this will not fit your finger, I am so sorry. Mm. Well, what about you are the one who looked at it, yes. I'm going to put it on whatever finger, because I this one's all full up with rings. It's going to be a thumb for you. That's made, right. for, that's made for a dwarven digit. It looks nice. I like it. It's all right. How much? Pure platinum. <laughs> Pure platinum. Indeed. Really? Very good eye for quality, I say. Mm. It is, I do like it. How do you know it's pure platinum? How can you confirm that? This is my job. I literally confirm the materials of which Shuri is made from. There are many <laughs> methods of looking I'll into say, it. Yeah, I've, I've lived, this, this is, yeah. This Indeed. is a shop with a rep. If you're feeling it's strong, so it'd be a 350 gold. Mm. Once again, pure platinum. 350 gold. I mean, you know, as you said, you deserve something nice. If you see something, get it. It's been a while. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Uh, see in here, I look at him. I thought I was the one with <laughs> impulse control issues. Well, to impulse of purchases. I'm trying to take your example. Uh, let's say, uh, let's say what is uh, the woman on the other side, by the way, who's sitting, uh, the like other member of the hero family that's watching this is just very intently watching both of your hands. Sure. Not doing anything shifty. No, no. not at all. But they have run this business for a long time, and they're yeah. just keeping watch. Three hundred gold. Make a persuasion check. Come on. Where's my persuasion? Oh no. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I have to send firm. I have a business to run. Oh, look, I owe you anyway because you know. You helped cover me when I got this little guy, so. That's I'll toss fair. in 50 gold. All to right. say I've never done anything nice for you. Okay, now you've done something nice for me. Great. Fine. Yeah. yeah. All Let's right. Let's do it. We're buying it. All right. Okay. Fantastic making a deal in an uh, unexpected period of time, but uh, hope you enjoy. <laughs> How much money do you have, T? I have 300. I have more than 300. Do you not have 50 gold? I have 50 gold. Okay. Because I can, I can cover the other 300. Running out of sales. Very exciting. I know, this was. Retail purchase. Yeah. <laughs> we overcooked this Full. way too far. You did, I but you know, it's D&D. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, I don't, want to, I don't want to do anything weird. Well, I'm going to buy it back. Da, 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 There's a lot of platinum involved, but uh, purchased. <laughs> well, we're lining up a kill shot it. or something. Nope. Sometimes. <laughs> Play it Sometimes you just buy it. I love it. <laughs> Shetty's already dead. Yeah. Okay, yeah. We, we buy the ring and we head back. It could only be renewal. Yeah. We buy the ring. <laughs> <laughs> on the way, on the, once we're on the street, by the way, hmm. on the way back. I wasn't fucking kidding, by the way. <laughs> it's you guys just buy the ring and leave. Like, you can stay here for. Uh, we're, <laughs> we got shit to do. Sorry. Let's <laughs> take the conversation. Bye. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the last thing you hear is the door close. Like, 
What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <that was> a <laughs> what do you mean? You're very kooky. I know. Most of the people I've ever met who are very kooky are hiding a bunch of shit. Bad shit. I like the kooky. I don't mind bad shit. Most of my favorite people are a lot of bad shit. You've already seen a lot of my bad shit, I don't Ashton. Think, I don't think I've seen more than maybe just the first branch of a very big tree. You know about as much as I do right now, all right? All I know is I watched what the fuck happened yesterday. Was that today, Jesus? No, that was yesterday. Not one of my proudest moments. No, that's okay. I was just was really curious what you were afraid of. So you were very afraid. And that freaks me the fuck out. We can tell fresh cut grass as much as he wants, as we want, that he does not have to be defined by his past trauma. But what happens when your past trauma does not loosen their grip? What if your trauma doesn't let you forget? Well, and I'll admit I'm being a bit of a hypocrite here. I suppose my first instinct would be to break its fingers. Too bad I can't break something I can't see. Well. We'll have to work on that, won't we? I'm open to suggestions. I like you. I like you too. And I'm you're just such a shit. There. I especially like you when you're being serious. Hmm. I've done a lot to try and run away, reclaim my life. And it doesn't really seem to fucking matter at the end of the day. No. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe not, but I figure I'm always going to be a bit broken, and I'm okay with that. Hmm. I can work just fine. I can be the person I want to be and still be a bit fucking broken. Hmm. But FCG, Imogen, I think they can fix themselves. You and I, we're broken on a visual level. Ah, even Quite a fundamental literary. one. You can still be the best broken thing you can be, though. Absolutely. Do you think we're past redemption, beyond the point of return? Fuck no. I mean, to be fair, I'm not even sure if I... what redemption even means. <laughs> I... most days like who I am. At least I think I do. Most days I'm doing what I think is right until I'm proven not to be. Some days I do stupid shit. Some days you do stupid shit. Most days. But for some fucking reason I've decided this is the, this is the horse I have hitched myself to for a while. And I do not fuck around with that. Oh, you mentioned fresh cut grass and Imogen, and I think where we have our similarities is that we've resigned ourselves to not being able to fix what's deep down inside, but if we can give them the life we never had. I can even think that there's ways to work around it. I don't know. I worry about you. I suppose that's what I'm trying to say. Oh, That's sweet. Mm. I just hope that, you know, pay attention, maybe communicate with everyone a little bit more. Don't... Your bullshit is adorable, but <laughs> not all the time. Mm. Mm. <laughs> 
as you press further into the storm, this conversation. This fucking yeah, core. Right. yeah. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> Which is great too. This, 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 this gentle, soft conversation you're having at the table has been loudly shouted over the roaring oh, yeah, we're, we're storm right while here you're moving actually, through. Like, attempting, like, yeah. <laughs> it's adorable, but don't. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's adorable. <laughs> I'm a big fan of having an intimate conversation right over here. <laughs> Everyone can see your damage. No shit. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Chutney, you vanished. <laughs> What are you doing? I just stayed in the room. Stay in the room? No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, I'm out. I'm, I'm out. I'm running. I'm actually tiptoeing with my elven boots. Okay, I would like you to make a a stealth check. Stealth. Fine, with advantage check. because you're moving quietly while invisible. Thank you. I'm just gonna keep uh, focus up so if, it, if the blip moves. Natural twenty. Ooh, oh, we're at twenty-eight. Whoa, whoa. Dun, 28. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. It's good you rolled that, because these hallways are not extremely wide, and there are other members of the call walking through, some of them like carrying materials, other ones coming out from above where they were just covered in dust and sand, and you basically are, while you're invisible, you're barely like dodging full on that Japanese game show where they're trying to make Tetris block shapes while it's coming at them, like different members of the call, you're having to like move around and not bump into them as they're like suddenly turning the corner and not make any noise. You deftly dodge between them, mm. keep quiet as possible, uh, heading towards past the staircase to the left. Uh, so you're going up and to the left down, there is a downward staircase that leads into the basement. Um, it is, however, closed off right now with what looks to be a, a barred grate. Barred grate, uh, all from floor to ceiling? Uh, actually, it's, it's like, a, it's like a, a hatch grate that is currently held down and is locked. There's a, a padlock on it. Oh, shit. Well, let's get to work on that padlock. Okay, go ahead and make a uh, d20 roll, adding your proficiency modifier and your dexterity modifier. <laughs> Wait a minute, I have a thing for this, don't I, sleight of hand? Is this a sleight of hand? A sleight of hand is a stealing thing. If you, if, if you took lock picking as your other expertise, I have then that would be double. Thieves tools. Wait, I have. Oh wait, where's my fucking? I have a glove that helps. Yeah. Yeah. Plus five plus to that. Five. Okay. I have a glove that helps. Yeah. You know, Sorry. you gotta check. <laughs> Sorry. Ah. Okay. Uh, uh, seven. Seventeen. Seventeen. It takes you a moment. It's eighteen. Excuse me. Ooh. Okay. Eighteen. 18 was the threshold. I was going to say, it takes you a moment to realize that this lock is not budging, but you just push a little further, you find the right tumbler, it clicks and it swings open. And the gray kind of <laughs> makes a slight sound as you open it. There's that brief moment where you hold yourself. But nobody seemed to pay attention. Nobody was close enough to hear it. That would be Din happening outside, slamming the. Fortress. Before I step through, can I look down the stairways and see if there's anything that looks like pressure plates, anything along the walls, any kind of Make a, a perception or investigation check, your call. Investigation. Okay, I don't think I have advantage on that. Uh, 16 plus 5. 21. Ooh. 21. Oh Glancing God. about, you feel fairly comfortable that there isn't any sort of pressure plate or trap scenario in front. So, okay. So you head down the stairs. You head to the basement floor. Down here, there's a unique combination of scents. There is one, a, a faint smell of black powder uh, that permeates the air, as well as like rust, um, a, a whiff of huh? shit. Oh, uh, man. Don't shit where you blow. Uh, and you come down the bottom of the stairs and turn around, and you can already see kind of this wider hallway. That heads down to the opposite end and like goes further than the the floor space of the fortress. There's actually like a series of tunnels and hallways beneath here. Um, oh, I'm downstairs. It smells like black powder and poo. <laughs> I'll keep you posted. Okay. So where are you headed from here? You're you're just on the stairs. Are you heading to where beneath you envision your room was? Yeah, if it was straight down, I'll try and like remember where I was and try and look down the hallway for any sort of compartments or doors that might be directly underneath. Okay. But also keeping an eye out for traps. Roll a perception check for me, please. I'm looking for everything. 
Everything. Looking for all of it. Ooh, ten people. Ten. Things. Don't feel see. feel pretty safe and <laughs> and, and uh, comfortable that nothing here is trapped. Um, you continue to the right side, which would lead you kind of to the area beneath where the building was. As you head down that hall, uh, it opens up into another small room, kind of like the hallway kind of widens out into a large square chamber. Mm. And here you can see there are six different sets of prison bars, like oh. jail cells down here. And on the right-hand oh. side, you see, that was pretty good. You should be in the voiceover. <laughs> Dubbing specifically. Um, I can't see it. You see, <laughs> you see in one of these jails that most of them are empty, but to the right there is one of the larger ones between the bars. Uh, it looks like there's been furniture put in there. It's almost like this this cell has been retrofitted to be kind of like a guest room, hmm. to be comfortable. There's like been a bed placed in there with actual cushions, pillows. It looks like there's been a chair. It's been like some like a bookshelf <clears throat> situated. Um, and there is a latrine, which is where that faint scent was coming from that your woven nose picked up so accurately. Huh. Um, but they're kind of sitting on the the bed, uh, book in hand, uh, kind of reading glasses at the end of the nose. You see the handsome dark skin, dark hair, and somewhat haggard looking, once nice robes of Armand Treshi. Get it. I scan. I scan the the down floor. the The cells seem to be empty, but is there anybody down the hall? Do I smell any other scents other than the shit, black powder, poo, and him? Uh, those are all the scents you <laughs> smell. But you glance down the hall. Even on your. Yeah, you don't see anything. Oh God! I glance down the hall. Yeah, it's like further down the way. You don't see anything. I don't trust it. It's too easy. Keep going down the hall. That's our guy. You're yeah, just but I'm gonna have to pick there? a lock. It's gonna make noise. I'm gonna have to slit his throat. That's gonna make noise. <laughs> okay. You continue down the hall, and it curves. Glad that you reported to Imogen about the poop smell, but not Imogen actually seeing. Imogen has located see. trash <laughs> directly <laughs> below us. <laughs> the floor is not clear. Let me do a clean sweep. I'm gonna stack some bodies. I'll get back to you. <laughs> okay. As you continue down, it curves to the left, and there the hall continues on a lot further down. It oh. looks like there are uh, there are two small doors to the right, and then one large metal door on the far, far, far end. Uh, and there is walking towards you on this area uh, two uh, Paragons call really well armored figures with looks like blades on each side. That are just like patrolling through, and they're walking in your direction. Cool. Uh -oh. Cool. 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 Are they uh, like elbow to elbow? And how wide is the area? Uh, like if I look at it, I'm like, if I go sideways, there's a 50/50 chance I turn sideways and they can walk right on either side of me. That's about right. Yeah. Ah, <sighs> penis. Um. Why? Is that funny? They're approaching. Do you back away or stay put? Hmm? Yeah, I'll back. I'm gonna back away and just go back to the stair. Uh, back to the stairwell. See if they come all the way or not. Okay. So you go ahead and head back to the staircase and watch as they approach. They're kind of walking alongside. One of them's kind of mutters to the other. They walk in. One of them walks up to Treshy's uh, bars and kind of gives a little knock and is like, "You need anything?" So she goes, "No. I'm reading." Don't bother me. He's back to his book. He just keeps walking. They both come back to the base of the stairs and turn right and head down the other hall, but one of them kind of stops at that point and kind of stands for a second, just keeping watch. Right at the base of the stairs? Uh, just past the base of the stairs. So he has view of the hallway that the other soldier's going down, view of Treshy, view of the stairs, and view of the hall that continues down to the left turn where you first saw them. He's in a cross. He's right yeah. in the, He's like oh, sitting right sweet. there to have the best view of the position. Sweet. Oh, why can't I just assassinate people? Oh, damn it. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm, got a Where does one end? Where does the other begin? So I'm gonna 
moving stealthily. I'm going to move around him, and I'm going to go down the tunnel, the tunnel past Treshy, and go towards that large iron door down at the end. Okay. I'm going to risk it. All right. So you move down that hall. Uh, make a stealth check for me now, as you're passing directly in front of one of these figures again. If I make a move on the lock, it makes noise. If I make a move on Treshy, the guard sees it. If I try and take the guard, the other guard's going to come back. So I might as well see what's at the other end of this park. 22. 22, not bad. You quickly dart back down, head down that hall, cruise down the opposite end of the hall, and as the you begin to, to see these this massive metal door come into frame, uh, it is wider than the hall perspective you had when you first entered the hall. It seems like the door just gets bigger and bigger the more view you have of that. Um, there is a small room with two tables and another Paragon's call guard that is currently sitting there shuffling cards, just kind of absentmindedly. Um, it looks like there is a a hole in the ceiling where a large chain is that he can pull on, like almost like a like a like a pull chain mm -hmm. uh, that just kind of goes up. You don't know what that leads to, um, but the metal door is massive. Uh, the it it's a vault door. It's a full thick metal vault door. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. Oh boy. I think. Oh All boy. Right. Shit. This is good. I'll start making my way back down the hallway to the stairs. Okay. You curl back, you head back to the stairs. And out. And out. Mm -hmm. You go ahead and lift the latch, close it. Do you relock it or leave it open? Yeah, lock. Close it back in, and you head back to the chamber. Oh, to the room. And right about this time, we'll say you both have returned, and uh, as you enter the chamber, the two very dusty, like dust-coated uh, Ladna and Ashton had just sent a sat down with the rest of the crew. Did you steal a ring? Oh yeah, we got it. Why are you talking so loud? Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, been it was, shouting. Yeah, it was really. It was yeah. Outside. Okay. In, in, inside, side voice. We got it. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't steal it. No. Oh my god, I paid a fortune. For we that. just paid it. We just paid for it. That's successful, though. Yes. Yeah. Yes, we do have it. It wasn't really a good opportunity. They were just we were sure. the only ones, and yeah, yeah. they'll never suspect a thing. So you found Trashy? <laughs> yeah. He's oh. downstairs. And Are you here? Yep. <laughs> oh, one of six prison cells. He's got a nice setup. Prison the shitter's cell. awful. Yeah, he's in a prison cell, locked in tight. Uh, there's two guards on sentry, and then there was a third in a kind of a boardroom down there. It was a large vault door and a big chain hanging from a room and another one. So too much for just me, as much as I wanted to. Did it seem like he was packing up to leave, or, or did it seem like No, he he's just sitting there in a big old comfy chair reading. Can right. you imagine? What Prison existence. cells in a vault door. Yep. So that means he could potentially be staying. I think. Or they're just protecting he's, him until it's time to go. Yeah. I don't. I don't think he's a. I don't think he's a guest. I think he's. I think he's cash. Like they wouldn't. They wouldn't. Would they really put a. Like somebody they were trying to take care of in a prison cell, lock them in in the vault. Well, well, it's safer for down there. Exactly. Yeah. It might That's a lot money. of protection. It is. He might be paying a lot of money for it. If he wanted to get out and get, like, it's, I don't know, it just doesn't, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. I mean, they asked him if they needed anything, but they seemed real cordial. I don't know, it's kind of wishy-washy, but we don't give a shit, right? We're here to get him. Easier to get him out of this if he wants but to But I'd need somebody to come with me. It was too much, even for me. Well, I could help from up here. Potentially. What else was It's there? the guards. They're not just Tressy. What else was down there? Six cells that are empty except for his, two guards on sentry, one in the back room. Maybe more, give or take, if we go back another time. A big vaulted door and a chain that went all the way up into like a tunnel, but I don't know what that is unless they got a bell that they're ringing. Yeah, maybe an alarm or something. It's yeah. probably an alarm. Mm. Uh, so our options are trying to get him out now and not set off an alarm and get ours. Trapped inside of a fortress or to shift plans entirely. 
plant this ring on the crawler. I think they're moving him out. He's, you said he was all threadbare and his clothes were shit. He's reading a book. Mm -hmm. All his belongings, one would presume are being loaded onto this thing. Yeah, that's what I mean. Was it, did it seem like he had his belongings all around him or was it empty in the <clears throat> cell? No, he had a bunch of nice furniture in there, right? The I mean, for a prison cell, yeah. There was a nice bed that had been moved into it, like a bookcase. Like the handful of things that could fit into their larger prison cell that would make it seem like a nicer, tiny apartment. Like Hannibal but Lecter's you're, prison cell? Kind of, yeah, but still behind bars. So those... Shit. Artana Bo's in town. Maybe the pressure's just getting too hot and he wants to get the fuck out. That's what I assumed. This is where I'd go if the pressure was too hot, though. But if he's, oh, I mean, he was looking very skittish and cagey when we saw him on the roof, and that was a handful of days ago. And there was a bunch of guards around him who were like, all right, come on, Mr. Treshy, back downstairs. We've had your free time. Well, it's an easy choice because when the crawler goes, he's either on it or he's not. If he doesn't go, I'm gonna grab him here. But if he does go, we follow, figure out what the hell it is and either grab him or deal with whatever problem is bigger. And fuck, I just, as it, I just yelled at somebody about honesty issues, those crates that we were loading with his name on it, yeah. those big crates, they were not actually his stuff, per se. Those crates were what I was trying to nab from Hexum's house way back in the fucking day. What are they? I don't really remember. That's where everything got weird. Well, what do you mean? Crates are crates, right? These crates are... The sound, the feel, the size, the label. This is... I did mention maybe we should reach out to your dear old Joanna Hexum. I think that, um... You've paid off your debt to her. There is no such thing as really paying off your debt to someone like that. Well, you yeah. can get back into debt by asking what was in the crates. I think that she would have said something if she wanted me to know. I think that there are... I think I'm gonna have to send out some fucking feelers that I don't really want to send out. Why not just ask Haxum? I mean, our theories at this point are that they're all construction materials for the thing out in the desert that's looking at the moon, right? And that's mm -hmm. it. Whatever's in those crates is more than construction materials. Yeah, so if there's a if there's a destination B, can't hurt to ask her, because that's all we got. Shit. I said we put the ring on the crawler and follow it. We know that uh, fool and this elf from the Cerberus Assembly and this unseelie court are collaborating somehow. Yeah, ultimately, Trashy seems pretty low in the totem pole. We're okay. supposed to stay here and guard the place while they're gone. That's cool. If we all Go abandon on. our posts and chase after them, they'll know? Well, we don't care about being good paragons no members. i know but someone trashy. will send might send word to the caravan that hey those seven people that you left to protect your fortress all all right. left well we can make we can make all of that look for a time we can make all for of that time. look a little a little odd and not necessarily pinned on us okay there's lots of so we, first things first we got to plant that ring or do we do that in the morning or in the middle of the night when everyone's asleep? Yeah, that one. Okay. Now, storm. And there are three other people that I know of who might know what's in those crates. And depending on how things go, we may have to look some of them up. Shit. Fuck. Piss. That's great. Maybe she wants him back. Maybe she'll tell you something we don't know. That's valuable. After all, it's only your debt. <laughs> Oh no, not anymore. Oh, is it shared? There are people that that doesn't really belong to. Oh. She will. Ashton, I would share debt with you any day. 
It's about this moment you begin to hear voices from down the hall, raised voices, shouts of other call members yelling. Our front, now, arms. Fuck yes. <laughs> oh, I need this so badly. <laughs> Fuck, now what's happening? You begin to hear heavy footfalls now as other call members are like emerging from their rooms. They start rushing out towards the front of the fortress. Uh, those of you who are following yeah. suit, mm -hmm. um, you can see individuals are rushing off and they're like donning armor fast and grabbing weapons and there's kind of just this energy of chaos that needs to build throughout the base of the fortress here. Dust is starting to blow in from the outside as people push past the main doors, which are now held open. And in the darkened dust storm that is currently filling the space, you can hear other shouts happening. As you glance over in the, sh the size of the massive shape that is the mammoth crawler, you see flashes. <laughs> The body of one of the Paragon's call is now landing and rolling on the ground next to you. Part of the shoulder just burnt. And you seem like, ah, trying to sit up, but someone kind of just pushes him down and runs off into this. Someone looks back at you, they're after the load. Defend the load! And rushes in towards the, straight into the dust towards where the mammoth crawler is. And that's rolling tonight's episode. Oh, my God. He was burned? Yeah. No, Shoulder don't burn. stop. Ooh. Load. This is a perfect time to plan a ring. This is Where a or kiss it. Who is it? Who is it? Who's coming? Steal the load. We have so much shit we can do now. What an opportunity. Oh man. Oh, chaos. God. Yeah, there's chaos running. There's a lot of things you can do Ooh. in chaos. God. Depends on what That's you're feeling. And you have a week to think about it. So yeah. we'll pick up from there. Chaos. We're gonna have to hit our thread. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hardcore, yeah. hardcore. It's this is we've just been handed. Yeah, this is going to be a terrible, yeah. wonderful time. Num nums, num num so, nums. Num, 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 num. Good shit, man. I want to hit shit. Pick up for the next week. Yes. Uh, thank you all so much for joining us for this wild tension building, slow burn episode yes. to whatever the hell's going to happen next. To quote the great Willy Wonka, "Suspense is killing me. I hope it'll last." <laughs> um, thank you for joining us. We love you very much, and is it Thursday yet? Good night.